Okay, so here are all of my lip products. Right here is the acrylic container that I keep on top of my vanity, and it has lipsticks in it. This is my drawer of glosses and balms. Here are a couple of lippies that are too big to put in the acrylic container, so I keep them just sitting on top of my vanity. They stand up on their own. And then this box right here is my Shop My Stash box. So these are the 10 bold colored lipsticks that I shopped my stash for in my last Shop My Stash video. I am going to be decluttering these today, which will have repercussions for my Shop My Stash, but I'll address it in that future video. All right, I got them all kind of uncovered and laid out side by side for the most part. I wanna be able to scan through and look at each product. What I'm going to do first is pick out the ones that I know I love the most, the ones that I would absolutely not ever decide to part with. And I'm hoping that that will be actually the core of what I decide to keep. I really mostly just wanna keep the ones that immediately spring to hand. So I'm gonna pick those out first, and then I'm gonna do the rest of the declutter based on how many of them there are and what they are, just what colors, what textures, what kind of role they serve in my everyday life. All right, so I've pulled out the ones that I just immediately was like, oh, absolutely, I wanna keep them, no question, just no brainers. And I just counted them up and there are 25. So that's 25 of these products that I feel like you wouldn't be able to pry from my cold dead hands, et cetera, et cetera. And that's pretty close to the half that I was hoping to keep. I think I probably have wiggle room by about eight more products to keep and then still meet my vague goal of wanting to keep only half. So I'm gonna go ahead and swatch the keepers one by one, not necessarily in color order, but just so that I'll have a record here on my arm of what they all look like. And that way, if I'm trying to decide about any of these, I can check against those swatches and see if any of them match up with the ones that I'm definitely keeping. So this is a brand new product to my collection. I bought it with the Sephora gift card that I had last month, and I haven't filmed the video yet about what I purchased with that gift card, so I haven't shown it on my channel yet. It is the Bobbi Brown Crushed Lip Color in the color Bare, and it is possibly the most perfect product for me to use on my lips of all time that I've ever owned. It's part of what made me want to do this declutter because I was just like, it's so much more perfect than any of these up here. And it's equally perfect with all of these. I just want to pare it down and use precious things like this more often. This is an amazing formula. It's seemingly a bit sheer when you first apply it, but it builds up rather quickly and it is so comfortable to wear. It smells a little bit like band-aids. That's kind of its only downfall, but it doesn't bother me. I cherish this product. The way that I found out how much I love this formula was that I got this little sample size of it. It's in the color Babe, and I really, really love this color too. It's a bit more of a pinky red. It reads pretty red on me though. I kind of consider this to be a soft red. And these are two of my favorite lip products currently in my collection. This is NARS Catherine. It is in my shop, my stash right now. It's kind of a coral guava. It's my only NARS Audacious. It's a gorgeous, creamy, pigmented formula, not too glossy. Something I've learned about myself is that I don't really, really like a glossy bullet lipstick. I like my bullet lipsticks to be either matte or 
on the matte side of satin. And this one I would say is on the matte side of satin. It's not matte, but it's, it's definitely not glossy. And to me, I had a bunch of corals in that shot, my stash. I'll talk more about this when I actually film the wrap up video for it. And this is definitely the most wearable, the most natural on me. And it's almost like a sort of a springy and summery, joyful nude in a way, the way that it wears. I really love this lipstick. Um, yeah, one of my all-time faves. I mean, I really love all of these. I don't need to say it for each one, but you know. This is NARS Shiop. It's one of the oldest lippies in my collection. It's a little bit grungy and grody, but it is such a beautiful statement lip. And I'm so happy that I have it in my collection. I only wear it like on occasion. Like I only wear it occasionally, but when I do choose to wear it, I'm so happy I have it. I love putting together looks for which this is the star of the show. And I don't own very many pinks. For me to own a pink, it has to be really distinctive and splashy like this. It has to really be uh, some special tone of pink. Like the, the tone balance has to be perfect. Tom Ford Wild Ginger. This is another one that kind of motivated me to go ahead and film this declutter. I was wearing this in the first video that I filmed in this space, which was I think my favorites video. And I was watching back the footage and I was just like, I don't need any other reds, any other orange reds, like warm toned reds. This is the fanciest lipstick I own. It's my favorite lipstick formula. It's the perfect color. I was just like, why am I keeping so many other reds when I have the one? Because I would like to reach for this one nine times out of 10 when I want a red. And that 10th time is when I want to wear a blue red, in which case I'll just reach for a different red. But I don't need anything that sort of dupes the vibes of this lipstick. I just want this one. So that's that right there. These two precious babies, I, I love these products. These are Lancome and Prenza Scholler, the collab that I got in a bundle from Octoly. This one is sort of like a brownie rose nude and it is just stunning. I also love this formula. It smells like violet and I've really gotten used to the smell. It's lovely to me. And this is a true, pure, brilliant orange, the likes of which I did not own in a cream lipstick formula before. I think that this Rev, this ColourPop lipstick, it's a liquid lipstick. I think that it's kind of similar to this, but it's such a totally different formula that this is definitely unique to my collection. And there are also glosses on the butt ends of these, and I really like this gloss formula too. It feels a tiny bit tingling and plumping and very nourishing, and it's also very flattering. So these have become instant classics in my collection. I've reached for them a lot since I got them. This is my beautiful, <laughs> my beautiful Twiggy Nude. It is Beige Babe by Maybelline. It's a matte. And I don't really like the way this smells. I've been reckoning with that lately, but it's not offensive enough. It's kind of like, it smells kind of like a vanilla latte. Like it smells like coffee and I'm not really that into that, but I love the way that it looks. I love how it's creamy, but it looks incredibly matte. It doesn't give me that white line on the inner rim of my lips, which I've learned recently. Another nude that I acquired recently does. And I just take such pleasure in wearing it. And I do believe that this was the first lipstick that I bought after my no buy year ended. And I always get kind of a little thrill when I pick it up to wear it because of that. This is another staple. It has become kind of a staple nude. It is Charlotte Tilbury Miss Kensington. It's also a matte and it's pretty similar to Beige Bay, but it's just more pink. It's, a, it's just a little bit more pink. So sometimes when I'm wearing a look that has a bit of pink in it, like in the eyes or a pinky blush, and I want a nude, I'll reach for this one instead of this one. I find these formulas very similar. Obviously they don't smell the same, but I, I feel like the Maybelline mattes are really similar to the Charlotte Tilbury mattes in their sort of slippery feeling like they feel cushiony even though they look matte. All right, and this is obviously one of my favorite formulas because I have three of them. This is the M Cosmetics Infinite Lip Cloud in Crimson, which I think might actually be discontinued. The last time I checked for it on the website, uh, I didn't see it. There are some other reds that look really pretty, but that's Crimson. It's kind of like a, it's a blue red, but it's, it's, a, it's a neutral blue red that can be 
kind of light and stainy or be very dark depending on how much you build it up. And these are liquids, but they don't dry down. So they stay creamy and really comfortable, but they're really tenacious. I've learned about myself over the past several months that I really don't like lip products that don't last well. And many of these are in the top row on the chopping block because of that one fatal flaw because they wear away. So here we have Rose Nude. It's my perfect Rose Nude. It's not too pink, which I really like. I don't like a Rose Nude that leans too pink. I feel like it makes a girl out of me. This makes a slightly grungy woman out of me, which is what I prefer. This is Faded Clementine. Again, one of my all-time favorites. Such an unusual yet wearable lipstick. And then Crimson. Here is Bite Beauty Puree. It's their liquefied formula. This is the only product I have in that formula. And I resisted wearing it a lot because I felt like it was super shiny. And then when I shopped my stash for it, I realized that it's not as shiny as I had thought. And it is such a gorgeous, sophisticated, burnt orange color. Another Bite Lippy that I really love. This is glacé and it's really similar to the infinite lip cloud in rose nude it's maybe a ever so slightly a touch less gray and a touch more pink but i actually consider these to be like the same color in two different formulas but i like this color enough that it's worth it to me to have it in both formulas because i'll reach for different ones of these depending on the, the day, the event, the occasion. Here is one of my favorite NARS products. It's Famous Red. It's an almost fluorescent and ever so slightly cool toned reddish pink. It's almost like the more saturated version of Babe, which is that Bobbi Brown color. And this just pops on my skin so amazingly. It's something about the contrast and the undertones. It's a really, really special statement red for me. Here's another NARS. That's the Velvet Lip Glide, and this is the satiny one. This is Het Low, which is brown, basically, and it's a really good My Lips But Better color on me. I think I have pretty pigmented lips with kind of a brown undertone, and I really love that product. I particularly love this color. I think I've fallen a little bit out of love with the NARS Satin Lip Pencil Formula because it isn't as tenacious as I would like. It's a little bit slippery. I have to reapply it a lot. And I don't love Het Low as much as I used to for that reason, and I'm kind of looking to beef out my collection with some lipsticks that are this same color but have more tenacity. And I actually have a couple in mind. It's part of why I'm clearing out some spaces because I have a couple lipsticks that I'm thinking about adding to my collection soon, and one of them is that. It's like a color dupe for Het Low. But I don't feel like it's enough out of favor that I would that I'm ready to let it go. Here's Tom Ford Indian Rose, and I'm glad I'm swatching it close to all these other rose nudes because I can see that it's pinker. I love the Tom Ford formula, and I really like this color. I like it enough to want to hang on to it, even though it's a mini, which isn't my preference. I don't love minis, but I do find myself reaching for this consistently and really being happy on the days that I wear it. Here is a NYX Soft Matte Lip Cream in London. This is pretty new. This is something I bought, I think, in February with part of my beauty budget. I like it because it's got like a weird yellowish undertone. It's sort of like a yellowish brown. I don't have very many nudes that have that baby poop yellow undertone. In fact, I don't have any. And mostly it doesn't look good on me. Usually yellow toned nudes don't look quite right on me, but this one looks really sort of like soft grunge and I love it quite a lot. And then here is the matching lip pencil, which I actually think I love even more. I really, really like this. It's almost like it's it's darker and it's even a little bit like less nude and more sort of intense. And I like the combo. Sometimes I like wearing the lip pencil by itself. And I find the soft matte lip creams to be a little bit less tenacious than I would wish, which is why I like having the pencil so much because even when it wears away, you can still see the color there. So this Bite pencil doesn't have a color name, but it's number 022. And this one is Makeup Forever Wherever Walnut, which I really love. And this is Givenchy Lip Brown, which is the browner of them. 
mm, the the next London pencil is the brownest, but it's also the yellowest. Lip brown is the brownest that's still kind of in the pink family. They they look kind of similar, but I just as you can probably tell by how short these are, I wear these a lot. Like I'm constantly reaching for these and I do choose between them based on their different undertones. So I, I get a ton of use out of all of these. These definitely spark joy. They're like four of my favorite lip products right here, these four pencils. And then this is the fifth pencil that I'm keeping, the fifth lip pencil that I'm going to keep. It is Love Bug by ColourPop. And as you can see, I didn't really have any kind of rusty, ready red lip pencils. And sometimes I find them useful for when I'm wearing a darker color. I mean, I find this useful now for when I'm wearing a darker red or like a more ready, rusty red. And, and this is creamy enough that I can wear it on my own. I really love this color and I don't see anything quite like it. Well, what's this up here? So the thing that it's the closest to is this Lancome kind of brownish lipstick, but Love Bug is a little bit redder and in some ways a little bit darker. So they're not exactly the same. Then here are the two glosses that sprung immediately to mind. This one has been in the purgatory box for a while and I recently took it out. I wasn't totally sure about it because I just hadn't worn it enough. So over the past couple of days I've been wearing it and I love it. I love it. It's the Buxom Full On Plumping Lip Cream. It does plump and it is in this very pale color. It's the color pink champagne. I'm not going to swatch it because just it's so messy and you can't really tell, but you can probably tell a little bit by looking at the color of the wand. It's just super, super pale pink and it makes my lips look really, really full and pale. And I really like that. And I like the plumping qualities of the Buxom glosses. And also for gloss, I kind of like that this is a mini. It's a pretty robust mini. It's mini size doesn't make it awkward to use, which is why I don't like the minis of like these Tom Ford ones. I just feel like it's going to break. It's so little. It's hard to put, I'm afraid to put pressure on my lips when I'm applying it because it seems so delicate. But with this, it, it functions exactly the same way as the full size product, even though it's a mini. In, in terms of practicality, it's the same. It's just that the fact that it's a mini means that there's less product in here, which is fine with me because I don't feel like I need twice this much of this product. I don't wear glosses enough and I don't love glosses enough to need that. So I'm perfectly happy with this. I really, really like this. And then this is a gloss that I recently purchased because I just wanted a super tenacious, neutral gloss with some glitter in it and I had had a mini of this formula that I loved and I missed it. It is Urban Decay Naked and it's the Hi-Fi Shine gloss. So it's just a really pretty kind of, I guess it's sort of a slightly glittery mauve and I like the smell and the taste and I like how it plumps my lips and I like the fact that it sticks to my lips and stays and stays and stays. So I hand picked this product to add to my collection just in the first or second month of my beauty budget year. I definitely want to hang on to this one. It sparks a lot of joy. I really like everything about it. So now that I've swatched all of these, I'm going to move them out of frame so that we can have more room to focus on those ones. All right, these are the ones that are all on the chopping block. And given how many came straight out of my collection as being my favorites, and given how much love I feel for them, like how much love I felt when I was swatching them, I, I'm not sure how many of these guys are going to make it through. There are a couple that I'm pretty sure I want to keep, but I think I'm just going to go through in order and talk about each one with you. Let's start on this side. So this is the ColourPop Lip sticks in who run this and I'm not sure why I didn't pull this out as one of the ones that I want to keep because I've always thought of it as one of my favorite colors and as being really unique to my collection. It is in my shop my stash right now. I've worn it a couple times and I really enjoyed it but for some reason it didn't kind of glow and spring to my hand the way that the other ones did. So let me see if it's similar in color to any of my all-time faves. All right there's definitely not a color and formula dupe for who run this here. I thought it might be similar to Love Bug, but it's definitely got a little more rusty orange in it than Love Bug. And the color is pretty similar to the Bite 
lip product, the Amuse Bouche one, but the formula is so incredibly different. This is super matte, and I can get a matte look with this in the way that I can never get from that Bite product. So I'm going to go ahead and tacitly say that I'm going to hang on to this. This is, I think, my only remaining liquid lipstick that dries down. And... I'm, I'm not going to keep it. I've worn it once over the past year, I think, and that was when we went to Disneyland. And it did hold up well. It stayed on my lips all day. You can see it in my Disneyland vlog, actually. I was impressed. I was impressed by the way that it performed. I just don't like liquid lipsticks that dry down. And when I think about it, if I were to go to Disneyland again, for example, and if I were to decide that I wanted to wear a bright orange lip all day at Disneyland, I would, I would reach for this. I would wear this... Lancome lipstick and I would just reapply it and I would be so much more comfortable. My lips would be so much more comfortable and I would be just more comfortable reapplying it. I just feel like liquid lipsticks are so messy and they kind of require you to make a sharp line on your lip, which I don't like. I like to have like a faded, blotted, comfortable, lived in look, even with a bright, bold color. So this one is gonna go. This is a beautiful product from Lipstick Queen. It's the Vesuvius Liquid Lipstick in Coral. It's a beautiful, bright, or orange and I I love it. I really love this bright shiny color for this product. I really love the rich corally orange red and I really love the formula. It's slightly plumping, it's a little bit tingly, but this is really old and I kept it from my first declutter. I kept it through my first declutter because I loved it so much. I was kind of hoping that I would continue to wear it even though I know it's so old and I haven't reached for it since that declutter because I think it's kind of past the point where even if I wanted to wear the color, it's like my conscience stops me. So it's sitting there. I know it's beautiful. I know I love it, but whenever I think about reaching for it, I kind of get queasy because I'm just like, I just don't know if that's still okay. And it's got this brush tip I think that's part of it. It's not just that it's really old, it's that it's really old and I know that I've been swiping that brush tip over my lips multiple times over the past several years and it just doesn't seem sanitary to me anymore. So I'm sad to see this one go. I would love to get more use out of this and I'm pretty sure it's discontinued, but it I've got these 25 beautiful perfect ones, so I'm I'm not that sad. This is another product that I really loved in the past and that I just I kept it through my declutter because I was like, oh, I love that thing. And then I just haven't reached for it a single time since that declutter. It's the Sephora Rouge Lip Tint. And it's sort of like a watery stain in a really pretty brown color. As you can see, I wore it quite a lot. I've I'm definitely used half of this. Um, but at this point, it's kind of just taking up space. It's a lovely product, but it kind of gives me that uneven stain look on my mouth. And to be honest, when I bought this and when I was wearing it a lot, I really liked that look. I kind of liked that brown wine stained look on my lips. And at this point, it's just, it's definitely not my preference. And this product is also kind of old and grody. And if I haven't reached for it, over the past year, like since I decluttered my lipsticks before, I really don't see myself getting any use out of it and certainly not enough to have it be worth the space that it's taking up. This is a NARS Velvet Lip Glide in La Palace. It's a blue-red, and this is a really comfortable formula. It's really, really slippy and nourishing and very pigmented and pretty. I know a lot of people love this formula. It also smells like vanilla. That's kind of nice but I just don't want to keep this. I don't have any blue reds here in my all-time favorites, so I do want to keep a blue red from here, and there are several contenders you might be able to see. I already know which one it's going to be, and this isn't it, so I'm going to say goodbye to this little guy. Oh, this is an interesting situation. There are actually three that I need to talk about all at once. So this is the NARS velvet lip pencil in endangered red and this Anna Sui lipstick which is in the color F403 is very similar and then this little deluxe sample size of Fenty Griselda is really similar I'll swatch them for you right now so here's the NARS pencil 
In the middle is the Anna Sui lipstick, and then on the end is Fenty Griselda. NARS Endangered Red and Griselda are the most pink, and the Anna Sui one has a little more of like a raisin color. It's like a little more brown. And here's the deal. I didn't reach for any of these when I was picking out my true favorites because I don't wear this lip look very often. This kind of vampy, ruddy, vampire lip bitten color. I just don't reach for it that often. I do wear it occasionally. So I don't want to get rid of all three of these, but I don't need all three of them because even though they are quite different in formula and even though the colors are slightly different, given how frequently or rather how infrequently I go for a look like this, I really only need one lipstick to affect that look. And that will be the one lipstick that I occasionally wear when I want that vampy look. So the NARS one is the lightest in color. It's kind of uh, pale and washy. And for some reason with this lip pencil, I have a little bit of a hard time getting an even coat. It's like when I, I line my lips, I, I fill it in, I make the shape that I want, and then I start blotting it. And when it blots off, it just gets really patchy and uneven. So I think that it's between these two and they are definitely the more nourishing. That's the other thing about the NARS pencil is these velvet matte lip pencils can be a little bit drying. And these ones are definitely more nourishing. And so so if I'm going to pick between these two, even though I really, really like how super pigmented Griselda is, I love the dark brownie raisin undertone of this Anna Sui lipstick. I like it the best in terms of undertone of all three, and I also find the formula to be the most nourishing. And I like the fact that it's full size, and this one is a mini. So I'm going to keep this one, and I am going to let go of these two. This is the other Anna Sui lipstick that I have, and it is concealer lips. It's like a concealer on me, and I've found that to be very, very useful because sometimes when I'm wearing one of these really pale colors, it just doesn't look quite light enough for what I want, so this is not like my dream lipstick. It's not like I am filled with gushes of joy every time I look at it, but I do use it all the time. I find it very useful and it sparks joy for that reason. Oh gosh, this is interesting. This is the California Love color in the Velvet Blur, the ColourPop Velvet Blur lipsticks. I really like this and I don't know why it didn't sp spring to my mind when I was first picking out the others. I think I kind of just forgot about it and that tells me that maybe I don't love it as much as I thought I did. Let me see if I've got any dupes. You know, it's really relatively similar to some of these other colors. There's definitely not an exact dupe. It's, it's like a brownie rose nude, which is kind of like my favorite color category. I enjoy having this type of color in a bunch of different formulas, and I don't have another one in this formula. So I'm going to go ahead and hang on to this one for now, but I think what I'm going to do is monitor it. I'm going to keep it, but I'm going to pay close attention over the next couple of weeks to how often I wear it and to how much joy it actually does spark. And I might go ahead and let it go in a future reckoning or something. I'll, I'll mention it at some point if I decide not to keep it, but for now I'm, I'm going to keep it. All right, this is NARS Let's Go Crazy. This is a cool lippy, but I feel like if I'm going to wear something like this, I'm going to wear Shiop because Shiop is like a classic and I love it so much. Let's Go Crazy is just, you know, it's like a slightly doled down version of Shiop. If I'm going to do it, I'm, I'm going to do it. So I don't feel like I need to keep this one when I already have an absolute all-time favorite in such a similar color. Here is Pussy Control, my velvet matte lip pencil. I almost pulled this one when I was pulling my, my initial group. I almost pulled this one. I think I still have a little bit of trepidation around it because it's such a funny, funky color. And I don't necessarily consider myself to be someone who has funky colors as her absolute favorites. So that's why I didn't make it into that initial group of 25. But I do really love owning this. It does spark a lot of joy. I definitely want to keep it and keep wearing it. All right, let's talk about this mama. This is Uncensored, the original Fenty lip paint. I'm not going to keep this. 
I have been keeping it because I love the richness of the color and it's so hard. Every time I think about decluttering it, and the reason I frequently think about decluttering it is because it's so messy. It is so messy to wear. It's so messy to apply. It's really difficult to get a nice, soft, but symmetrical lip line, which is what I like. And it just is so inky and drippy and it gets everywhere and it's just a mess. And actually there have been some times recently when I reached for it, I was gonna wear it and I opened it up and I took it out and I saw that inky, drippy doe foot and wand. And I was just like, not today, Satan. And I put it back <laughs> because I just didn't want to deal with the mess. So I, I think I'm going to give this to a friend. I have a friend coming over later today who I actually know has been wanting this product. And I think, I don't think she has purchased it for herself. So I'm going to offer this to her. I love the color and I really love this beautiful sculptural component. Um, I just am just not using it. And the fact that someone else might be able to derive a lot of joy from using it makes me even more encouraged in my decision to declutter it. Oh, I'm going to do a little swatch dot because I think it's time for me to talk about my blue toned reds. So these are two little minis of the Pat McGrath. I think that they're both the matte trance lipsticks and uh, they're, they're two Pat McGrath lipsticks. I'm sure that one of those matte trance, I'm not so sure about the other one. This one is the color obsessed and it's the one that I'm sure is uh, a matte trance. Cause you can just tell it's like so, so velvety. It's so flat and velvety that it just looks endless. It looks like a tunnel into my hand, like a red tunnel because it's so matte. I was going to swatch this next to wild ginger. It is, that's the thing that I have that it's the closest to, but it is way more matte. And here's the thing. These were in the purgatory box. If you saw my recent video, you know, and I just hadn't decided about them yet. They're so dinky. They're little, they're a little messy. They're hard to use. Like all the things I don't like about minis apply to these, but I've been playing with them over the last couple of days. And you guys, the quality and the colors just have captured my heart. They have just shot to the top of the list of all the red lipsticks I've ever owned and ever tried ever. They are so beautiful and special. I do feel like the formula is all that it's cracked up to be. And even though Wild Ginger, when I was wearing it the other day in that video, when I was editing the footage, I was like, I never need another red, right? Especially not another orange toned red, which is what this one is, Obsessed. I think that I will get a lot of pleasure out of wearing this because it is so incredibly matte and velvet. And Wild Ginger doesn't give me that. Wild Ginger is a satin. So I'm going to keep this as my only other orange toned red, my only other kind of fire red. And I'm going to consider the Tom Ford Lippy to be my satin fire red and this one to be my matte. And then the other one is called Elson and it is blue. It is super blue toned and it doesn't look quite as matte. I think it might also be a matte trance. It doesn't look quite as matte, but it, it is also still pretty matte. And when I swatched this, which I have completely fallen for as well. And in fact, this is the lipstick I was wearing in the introduction to this video. I was wearing nothing on my eyes except mascara on my top lashes, nothing on my cheeks except highlighter and this on my lips. Swatching it and kind of falling for it over the past couple days is one of the things that has made it okay for me to let the Fenty lipstick go. Because the Fenty lipstick is a pretty neutral and universal red, but if you have to pick pick a side, it's blue. It's blue toned. It's not a perfect balance between warm and cool. It's a little bit of a cool toned red. And this is just the perfect velvety statement, cool toned red. I think it's the one it's going to be my one. It's going to be my one cool toned red. And I think that the only other true red in here, if I'm remembering correctly, is this Wet n Wild gel pencil. It's a pretty kind of 
middling but cool red. And I just hate these slippery gel lip liners. I really don't like them. To me, the point of a lip liner is that it's like really tenacious and sticks to your skin and kind of dries on your skin and stays there no matter what else happens to your other lip products. These aren't like that. They're basically just like slippery satin lipsticks in a very, very skinny tube. And I'm not going to keep either of them. This is Dream Easy. And this is a ColourPop Luxe lipstick. And it's kind of like a, mm, it's like a bright watermelon, but not too obnoxious. Let me see if I've got any dupes. It's definitely different from everything else I have. I don't tend to reach for this. I don't tend to spring to this when I'm looking for lipsticks that I want to wear. I don't tend to be like, Ooh, I can't wait to wear dream easy, but sometimes I wear it in, in, um, videos sometimes it's like the perfect lipstick to finish a look in videos. If I need something that's just like really pink, but a little bit soft in terms of its tone, I, I like using it to pair with certain eye looks and certain clothes actually goes with. And whenever I wear it in a video, I really like the way that it looks when I'm editing the footage. All right, this is Tom Ford True Coral. And I have shot my stash for this. It's so similar to Dream Easy. That's the other thing. True Coral is pretty satiny and it's pretty bright. It's kind of like a glossy watermelon, honestly. And because I shot my stash for this, I've worn it twice since I filmed that first video and I didn't like it either time. I just don't like this shiny watermelon coral on me. And I used to really love that kind of color. Like I used to really, really love that really bright, fresh, youthful, shiny watermelon. And I just realized that my tastes have changed. My face has changed and this doesn't really suit me anymore. Here's another from Lipstick Queen. This is another one that I didn't declutter the first time because I love the product and I have such fond memories of it. And I really didn't want to admit that it's time had come, but it's also really just so old. Like I've had it for years and years before I started my channel. All right, it's time to talk about this one, which this, I've actually been, I've been dreading talking about this in my declutter because this is my only lip product that I feel like it is kind of impractical for me to keep, but I think I'm going to keep it anyway. It's the only one. It's the only one that I'm keeping for kind of impractical reasons. I mean, I guess it's, there's one practical reason, which is that it's really unique. It's really unique. And here's the thing about it. So this is um, Coral Gypsophilia. It was a limited edition Givenchy lipstick and it was a gift from my friend Alyssa. It is so bright on me. Like I can tell that the camera is not really gonna get it. It almost like is looking brown or something on camera because the camera can't understand <laughs> this color. It's fluorescent coral. Like when you look at me when I'm wearing this, it looks like my lips are under a black light. And that is just not something, there's a reason that it didn't make it into this, even though I cherish it so much because of where it came from. It didn't make it into this initial group because I just, I rarely wear it because it's so intense. I did shot my stash for it. I have worn it twice over the course of this shot my stash project. And I did enjoy it both times, but both times I really felt like I was kind of out there. Like it just, it's, it's so bright as to be almost avant-garde on me. So I'm keeping it because I love the packaging. I love Alyssa. I love the memories attached to it. And because I, I kind of get like a warm, fuzzy feeling in my stomach from having such a, an absurd color in such a luxury formula. And I will continue to wear it from time to time. This is a Kat Von D Everlasting Glimmer Veil in the color Rocker. And this is my only Kat Von D product. It's the only one I've ever bought. It's the only one I own. And I am not gonna keep this and it's for a number of reasons. The main reason is that it stains. It stains so badly. I kept this during my first declutter because I love the idea of having an orange glitter lipstick. And I didn't want to declutter my only glitter lipstick for my collection. I love the formula. I love the way it looks when it's on my lips. Well, I mean, I well, you know what? I don't love the formula. I love the way it looks when it's on my lips. I love the way that the formula applies. 
but it is a liquid lipstick. It does dry down. It is kind of drying and it stains so badly for like 24 hours. It stains my lips really, really bright, like pinkish orange. And Kat Von D, come on. Like, no, no. So this lipstick, I, I wouldn't, if I loved it, I wouldn't get rid of it just because Kat Von D is garbage trash. I've realized that I actually don't love it. I love the idea of the look. So I've been thinking about it and I, I, I've been thinking that maybe that I'll buy an orange glitter lipstick in a bullet. And when I realized that I could do that, I was like, oh, I want to keep this garbage around. I never wear it because it stains. But what's interesting is after I had decided that, I started playing around with some glitter on my lips, like some Stila glitters, and I was able to create a gorgeous brown orange glitter lip using my Stila glitter, the gold one, the ColourPop Glitterly Obsessed gel. I think I used that and I think I used a couple of other lipsticks mixed together. I put a, put it all in my lips kind of drag queen style one evening while we were hanging out in the house and I just loved it. And I was like, Hannah, whenever you want a glitter lip, you can just use glitter and create a glitter lip. So for all of those bajillions of reasons, I have no reason to hang on to this. This is one that I also have had a hard time deciding about. It's the Lancome Perenza Scholar lipstick, and it's sort of like a sheer, it's a very, very sheer pinky neutral. Let me see if I've got any dupes. So here it is down here, and I swatched it again up here next to my other kind of twiggy, twiggy nude, you know, colors. It's different. It's definitely a lighter color and it's more sheer and it's in such luxe packaging and it's a really lovely nourishing formula. This is a treatment. It's a wand treatment that has like a scrubby on the end and you scroll it up. I think that this is almost panned. This is pretty much done for. It's like I can barely get any product out anymore. The little silicone tip is so grungy. I think that it's time has come. This is a Bite Beauty lip pencil in a cool toned pink, which is so interesting. It's almost lavender. And I don't wear this color very often. And I own almost no lippies that are in this tone. In fact, it's almost like the thing it's the closest to is my... NARS one, Pussy Control. This really reminds me of the lipstick that I got from Octoly that was by Grande Lips, where the formula was really, really terrible. But when I put it on my lips, I realized that I really liked the color. At that time, I didn't realize that I already had a lip pencil with similar undertones. And now that I realize what it really looks like and how different it is, I think I'm going to try to wear this more often. This is the Agave Lip balm and that's it scrolled all the way up. It It's almost done. I can probably dig some out. I wear this at night quite a bit, but I really hate it. It's so awful. It's really gluey and goopy. It's really hard when you, you can't really apply it like this to your lips because it's so gluey. It's just, it's badly formulated. I loved the Agave lip mask in the foil tube and they tried to turn that formula into a solid, and in my opinion, it didn't go well. But I am going to use up the last, I think I probably have like five uses of this left. I'm actually just going to pop it on my bedside table, and in about five days, I'll probably just throw this away, or I'll put it in my empties. Glaciersbalm.com, coconutbalm.com. I really don't like this product. I really don't like it. It's just petroleum. It's just Vaseline. It's petroleum is the first ingredient. It's just like a fancy Vaseline. And I don't actually find that it's that nourishing to my lips. I would rather use a lip product on my lips that's actually nourishing my lips instead of just locking in moisture because sometimes the moisture isn't really there to begin with and that's why I'm putting on a lip balm. So I feel like this is just taking up space in my collection. When I first got it years ago on, its, on the first launch, that's the other thing about this, it's really old. When I first got it, I used it a lot because it was so new and novel. So you can see that I've used like a lot of it. I mean, it, it's not, I don't feel ashamed of getting rid of this. I feel like 
its star has set in my life. This is a little mini of Penelope Pink. It's a Charlotte Tilbury lippy. And this is like a yellowy brown toned nude that doesn't look good on me. It just doesn't look quite right. And I think it might be partly that it's sort of satiny. So you can kind of see my natural lip color showing through. It looks a little bit similar to the browns that I do love from NYX, but um, they're more matte and more opaque and it's not and it just there's something not quite right and also it's just this dinky little mini so i am going to let go of this one this made it through my first lip declutter even though i said on camera that it kind of dries my lips out i think i just had a hard time admitting that this beautiful luxury product that i spent a ton of money on this is the ysl tint in oil voluped shine something something blah 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 I had a hard time admitting that I don't like it, but I don't like it and I haven't reached for it once since my other declutter. It's going. Same with this. Well, and you can see I've used more than half of this. It's been lying on its side, but you can see from this side, I've used more than half of this. This is a ColourPop um, lip gloss in the color Saddle Up. It's orange, it's cute, but it doesn't. it's not tenacious enough for me. I liked it and I wore it quite a bit in the maybe year and a half after I first bought it. And then it's just been sitting there since then because I've kind of learned that it bothers me when I have to keep reapplying and reapplying. I find that this, it's like I'll put on a really thick glossy layer and it'll look gorgeous. And five minutes later, it'll kind of be like sliding off of my lips and just leaving almost nothing behind. Let's talk about these NYX butter glosses. They made it through my first declutter because they're so lovely. NYX Butter Glosses are so lovely. They smell and taste delicious. They look really good. They are such a good value for money. They're really, really lovely. But I almost never reach for either of these anymore. And it's just because I really like both of these colors. But it's like, if I'm going to wear a lip gloss... I'm going to wear like a really glossy, shimmery, plumping gloss that I know I don't have to worry about for a couple of hours at least. And so I'm going to wear this if I'm wearing a lip gloss. If I want to wear one of these colors, then I'm going to wear one of these lip products, one of my all-time favorites, because these are both, this one is brown, this is tiramisu, no, praline. This is praline. It's really similar in a lot of ways to the other browns and rose nudes that I have, except that it's a gloss that doesn't last very long, which isn't my preference. And then this is sort of like a lighter rose nude. This one is tiramisu. And similarly, it's like I've got color dupes in here because I really like both of these colors, and these are in formulas that I much prefer. So it's time for both of these to go. Oh, this is a toughie. This is ColourPop Butter. And I got this because I had been eyeing it ever since it was released. And when I was placing a ColourPop order recently for my brow pencil, I was like, I'm finally going to get butter because I've wanted it all of this time. Well, joke's on me because look, <laughs> I'm going to swatch it here right next to my Maybelline one. They're basically exactly the same. Like they blend into each other. That's Maybelline Beige Babe and that's Butter. They are so, so close. And when I was originally contemplating this declutter, I was thinking I would keep Butter because I really like the formula, but I wore it a bunch of times in between the decision to do this declutter and the actual day because I wanted to be totally sure because I really do like the Maybelline one for all of the reasons that I already told you. And I learned two things about this. One, it's not that tenacious. I think that there's a lot of silicone in this formula and it causes it to sort of slip and slide around way worse than the Maybelline one does. And the other thing is that it makes that white line. I was wearing this in my most recent video, the, what was it? The Reckoning, Hannah's Reckoning, the one that went up on Wednesday. And by the end of the video, my lips looked disgusting. I don't know if you noticed, I hope you didn't, but I got that really, really harsh white line around the inner rim of my lips. And I, I was only filming for like 45 minutes. I was talking the whole time, but I had freshly applied this right before the video. And if it looked that bad after only 45 minutes, I just, I'm not going to keep this. This is a Clinique product, Clinique Almost Lipstick in Black Honey. 
It's theoretically so nice. And this is one that over and over again, I pull out and I, I try it on during makeup playtime. And I'm like, Hannah, you've got to wear this. You've got to remember to wear this more often. And then I just never reach for it. I don't really like sheer dark colored lip products. I always feel like it's not the look I'm going for. I never have a day on which it's the day I want to, I want that look. All right. This is my Sephora collection, outrageous effect, outrageous plump effect, plumping gloss. And look at, look at the number I've done on this. I don't know how well you'll be able to see cause it's kind of refracting, but I would say there's like a quarter, if that of this left. I've used so much of it. I constantly use it to prep my lips for the application of other products. Here's the thing. This to me is really, really similar to this Buxom one. They are like the same product to me. They're both very plumping, but I like the way the Buxom one looks on its own because it has that kind of cream effect that makes my lips look pale. This one is sheer. I don't, and I actually don't like the way this looks on its own. I only use it as a plumping tool. And also I've gotten so much good use out of this. I'm, it's almost panned. So I'm going to go ahead and just call it and keep this one and just have two products in one basically, and a lot more space in my drawer. This is a beautiful product and it's very tenacious. It's the Trish McAvoy Essential Pencil in Nude One. I love it because you can sharpen it. You can get a nice sharp tip and then it sticks and stays on the lips. It's just a really well formulated product, but it's so similar to my other rose nudes. And I have so many rose nudes that I love and it is pinker. It's almost an exact match for Tom Ford Indian Rose, which is my rose nude that's on the pinker side rather than the more brown side. And I would much rather pan that little mini of Indian Rose. This little mini has given me a lot of use. That's how much is left. And let's look at it. I do really like the color. I think the reason that this didn't spring to my mind when I was picking all of these is that it's like, it's, it's just this dinky mini and I don't love using it. It's like, I have to force myself to use it because it's, it's so fragile and little and difficult. I do love the color, but let's see how unique it really is. <laughs> yeah, not, it's just not, it's just not unique. It's really similar to this beautiful brown lippy from Lancome. It's really similar to Bite Glacé. It's a little bit darker and a little bit browner than Bite Glacé. I have what I need in terms of this color in these other products. This is the Fenty Beauty Gloss Bomb. It's my one gloss, it looks like, still remaining here. Oh, well, I guess this one. So both of these are like glossy products that don't plump and that don't really stay. This is more of a stain. This is that little popsicle stain, Dear Darling Tint. It's like a gel textured lip tint. And I never really wear it because it sort of stains my lips like a bright color, even though it's this soft peachy color. And then it just disappears instantly from the lips. It doesn't stay on the lips. It just like stains them and, and dries up. So the Fenty Beauty Gloss Balm is my one remaining one that's sort of just like a plain old juicy nourishing gloss. It's almost panned. I like this product and I think I'm going to keep it and truly, truly pan it. I think that will bring me a lot of joy. Lastly, here we have Charlotte Tilbury American Sweetheart. And this is, I think, the kissing formula. It's not the matte formula. It might just be her regular, I don't know what her regular lipstick is. I'm going to swatch it right here on my thumb knuckle. So it is definitely just like a neutral, regular rose nude. It's just like a plain old rose nude, maybe with a little more pink in it than some of my favorite rose nudes. Yeah. Cause look, there's my darker, that's the rose nude. I really, really love. That's like darker and more gray. And this one is like more pink. But the reason I never reach for this isn't because of its color. It's because of its formula. It's so thick and glossy. And I think the combination of the very normal color and the thick glossy formula, it, it looks, it kind of ages me. It doesn't look fresh. It, it looks kind of like thick and labored on my lips. You know what I realized when I was talking about this product from Bite is that I didn't include my two pot balms in this declutter. Let me grab them. 
I've gotten a ton of use out of this one from Laneige. You can see, like I've mostly panned it. I'm starting to hate it. And it's because I hate, you can't get it out. Like did, I lost that little spatula forever ago. Of course I did. It's so messy. It's so hard to get product out of this without getting it all underneath my fingernail and all over my hand and everywhere. And it's kind of starting to smell bad a little bit. Like it smells like a little bit just sour. I don't think I'm going to buy it again. I, I think I'm going to declutter it right now. The Herbivore one, I, I love. I truly, truly love this. And um, this one, now that I'm, mm, I, I just talked about how much I hate it. And so I'm going to like force myself to use this last little nubbin. But why? Why would I do that? I've done so well already. I've gotten so much use out of it. I feel like it's pretty much panned and I'm I feel like my heart was lightened so much by realizing it that what I truly wanted was to get rid of this one that I'm going to lighten it by that much more and just let myself off the hook for the last five uses of this one and just, it's just done. I did it. So this is, I, this is every day for me. This is like a, I guess it's now my one lip balm. So I want to make sure that all of these are definitely keepers. So I didn't declutter half, but I I did respectably well, I think. I definitely got pretty close. Let's look at them all laid out. So down here in the group that I am decluttering, there are 29 products. So almost 30 products. And if I started with 67, that's kind of looking like close to half, not bad. And then up here in the ones I'm keeping, again, there are 38 products. So kind of getting close to 40. And that does feel, again, I'm not super focused on the numbers. It, it does still feel a little bit big to me. I think that I've done what I can for today. I wanted to be vicious and I do feel like this is pretty vicious. Like this is pretty intense. This is a pretty intense cut. So I did want to do that. I did want to really go in, but I don't necessarily feel like today I want to force myself to part with things that I still kind of like having around and I still want to try some more. There are definitely some products up here that I'm just not sure about yet. I almost kind of feel like I'm still testing. I'm still getting to know whether or not I truly, truly love the thing. And I don't want to preemptively get rid of them before I've kind of had a chance to find that out. But I am going to keep curating. And I think that if and when I buy new lipsticks to add to this group up here, I will probably do it with a lot of care. And I may consider getting rid of one or two as I add one or two into the collection. you guys, this is amazing. My secret goal was to be able to fit all of the lip products that I'm keeping into this container. So previously I wasn't keeping my glosses in here. They were in a separate drawer, this drawer, which is now empty. And I wasn't keeping my lip liners in here. They were in the same drawer as my eyeliners in a different drawer. And there were also a couple of lip products kind of floating around, like the ones that were in my shop, my stash weren't in here. That was 10 lip products that weren't in this little thing. So I just had more lip products than I really had comfortable storage for. And now all of them 
fit into this except for these five which don't fit like they literally don't fit into the little holes so these five that don't fit into the little holes are going to be happily lined up in front of this and all of my lip products literally all of them will be on top of my vanity in my line of sight and every day when I'm ready to apply lipstick I can look at all of them and I see all my choices before me and I can make an informed decision and I also feel like every single option that I may choose will spark real joy within me so this to me is true success I wasn't really keeping track of how much room there was in here and of my numbers I really just wanted to keep everything I loved but I can't tell you how proud and happy I am that everything fits in here and this is really going to encourage me not to buy more lipsticks or if I do buy more lipsticks, it's going to encourage me to lean towards a one in one out system because I'm very happy that everything fits here, but there's actually not room for one more right now. So it may be that if I acquire one more, one of these will have to go. This is ridiculous. I feel like I can't even get them all in frame. And this is just too much for me. This is everything laid out. I know that a lot of people have more than this. A lot of people on YouTube have more than this. A lot of you watching at home have more lip products than this and, and like it that way. And that's perfectly fine. I'm not trying to cast aspersions at people who don't curate their lipstick collection. I know that some people love that kind of abundance. For me, I would like to have a number that allows me to really lavish love on each one that I keep. And this is too much for me to be able to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and separate these out into their different styles. So lipsticks in one category, balms in another, etc. All right, these are the lipsticks. These are the lip liners. I separated them out. We'll do them in a minute. And then I put my glosses and balms kind of all together in this little box, and we'll do them in a minute as well. I wasn't really sure. These these are the L'Oreal Color Reshines. They're like glossy, balmy lipsticks. I, gosh, should I put them with the glosses? They're so pigmented, but then again, so are a lot of glosses. I'm going to go ahead and put them with the glosses because... I kind of think of them as in between a lipstick and a gloss. That's the way that they function in my collection. So it makes sense to me to put them there. All right, here are all of my lipsticks separated into color categories. So here in this corner are the browns, and I actually included some of what I consider to be browns in the nudes group because they have more in common with the other nudes than they do with these browns, which are really more like brown brown, like I'm wearing a brown lipstick rather than a nude that has brown undertones. So because of that redesignation, the nudes category has grown larger than it was when, for example, I swatched all of my brown lipsticks, which included some of these. But I just decided to group them kind of more in terms of the spirit in which I wear them or the kind of effect that I'm going for when I wear them. So these are my browns. These are my nudes, and this encompasses a number of undertones. These here are my kind of statement corals, like the really rich coral lippies, four of them. It's really interesting. These are all the reds and oranges, and that's a lot for me. I feel like a statement red is a statement red, and I know that I, I need to whittle this group down. These are my kind of vampy berries. And actually this lippy right here was swatched as a brown in that other 
video. And I think it's more of a, of a berry. These are my kind of vampy berries. And then these are my grayish purple lipsticks. And I'm gonna go color category by color category. And I'll move some of these out of the way a little bit, but I'm gonna kinda I'm gonna kinda keep them all in frame. I wanna remind myself with what I am <laughs> I'm dealing. <laughs> I'm gonna keep them all somewhat on the table. So let's just go in order. I'll start with the browns. This right here is Maybelline Raw Chocolate. This is relatively new to me. I purchased it myself, which is already a point in its favor because I chose it myself and I really, really love it. I'm definitely gonna be keeping that one. This right here is Birkin Brown. This is a rich, deep brown, almost cool toned. I guess it's pretty much a little bit cool toned or at least neutral. It's uh, Charlotte Tilbury lipstick. It was a gift from my friend Prachi, who has an Instagram, or I mean a YouTube channel as well. And I definitely don't want to part with this. It has a lot of sentimental value and I also really enjoy wearing it. But I don't need any other lipsticks that are even remotely close to this color. This is a color category in which I only need one one kind of deep vampy brown. This is ColourPop California Love. I really, really like this color, but I don't love this formula. It is so similar to raw chocolate. It's not exactly the same, but it's so similar. And it's also kind of similar to Het Lo from NARS, especially when I buff Het Lo out and make it lighter. I know that they don't look very similar here. This isn't how I wear Het Lo. I wear it more like a stain and it definitely lightens up and that warmth comes out of it when it's buffed out. It's not exactly the same. A different Hannah in a past time might make an argument that California Love is different and that they're not dupes and so I should keep it, but I don't really like this formula. I think I can I can let this one go because I'm just I'm reaching for raw chocolate every time I'm inclined to reach for a lipstick that's like this in any way. I'm gonna hang on to Het Lo for now. It's kind of, it's like been my all-time favorite brown nude. Like it's one of my all-time favorite lip products. I also have a pretty good shot at panning it because I've used more than half of this stick and I still reach for it a good bit, even though I've had it for so long. It's one of the oldest lipsticks on this table right now. All right, let's move to the nudes and we'll see. Some of them might be pretty similar to this. If any of them, are in danger of being similar. I want to swatch them first. So let's look at Confession. So Confession, surprisingly, is similar in a lot of ways to California Love. It's just a little bit lighter, which I actually prefer. So this gives me even more reason to happily part with California Love. And then here's Miss Kensington. Uh, let's swatch Maybelline Beige Babe next to that. This is NYX London. This is, wow, it's it's really, there's not a lot left in there, but I super love this sort of like yellow toned, nudie color. I'm actually gonna swatch this M Cosmetics Morning Mocha next to that. I know that it's different because I swatched them together before, but they occupy a similar place in my heart. This is M Cosmetics Rose Nude. And this is M Cosmetics French Nude. They're so similar, and French Nude is just a little bit grungy, a little bit grayer. This is Bobbi Brown Crushed Lip Color in Bear. This is something that I bought myself, and I love this formula. Wow, curiously, it too is similar in undertone to California Love, though formula-wise, much, much more suited to me and my lifestyle. This right here is the Anna Sui Lipstick in 500 that I can't really wear on its own. It's like really concealer lips on me, but I do often use it to lighten up other colors. And then this is Tom Ford Indian Rose, more of a pink, but for me it belongs here kind of in the neutral or nudes category along with Rose Nude and French Nude. I really think of it as being uh, adjacent to those kinds of colors. Goodness, I definitely can do some weeding here. I am ready to let go of Rose Nude, the Infinite Lip Cloud. 
here's morning mocha rose nude and French nude. And these days, if I'm going to wear a rose nude, I'm going to wear a French nude instead, if that makes sense. Like the place that rose nude used to occupy is the place that French nude now occupies. And they're all so similar, so close, but morning mocha and French nude are just perfect for me in a way that has ousted rose nude. So even though it's pretty much my all-time favorite formula, I'm going to let it go. And that also means I'm going to pass along this Indian rose lip color from Tom Ford because these two are very close in color. So similarly, if I'm going to wear this Tom Ford lip color, I'd rather reach for a color that I prefer that serves the same purpose in terms of the way it suits makeup looks, but that I just prefer a color and a formula that I just prefer, which are these two infinite lip clouds. So these can definitely go. Right here we have Charlotte Tilbury Confession, Charlotte Tilbury Miss Kensington, and Maybelline Beige Babe. Miss Kensington and Beige Babe, they're not the same. I mean, Miss Kensington is much pinker, but they're both matte. They're both pale mattes, kind of pale matte pinky nudes. And if I'm going to wear that color, I am going to reach for Beige Babe. It's more matte. It's a little more nude and a little bit less pink. I had been unwilling to part with Miss Kensington before because it was my only Charlotte Tilbury lipstick. I'd received it as a gift. I really cherished having a Charlotte Tilbury lipstick and I liked wearing it from time to time and feeling my Charlotte Tilbury fanciness. But I've recently received so many Charlotte Tilbury lipsticks as gifts that now I can just assess it for what it is, like the color, the formula, the finish, the undertone. And when I stack it up against my other nudes, it it loses because Beige Babe is just so perfect for me and they, they occupy the same space. Confession might be on the chopping block. I'm going to have to revisit that one at the end. It is really similar in undertone to Bobbi Brown Bear, but formula-wise, they're very different. Confession is much more full coverage. It's a richer lipstick and Bobbi Brown crushed lip color and bare is a little bit more of a blotted lip. But if I end up with way more than I was intending to, confession might be on the chopping block. And I also thought that this might be on the chopping block. I'm going to go ahead and hang on to it for now because I do reach for it a lot to lighten up colors. It's, it's a useful tool. I think I would probably miss it if it were gone, even though it doesn't spark a ton of joy because I think of it as just a useful tool. I would miss it if it were gone. So these are all these all have individually uh, really good reasons to stay in my collection for now. This is also not long for this world. I bet this will end up in my empties in the next couple of months. So I'm going to stick with that for now and I'm going to wash off my arm and then move on to swatching some other color categories. And let's go ahead and have an ad break. I'll see you guys back here in a couple minutes. Okay, we're back. I'm hoping that we can fit corals, uh, vampy, what are these, vampy berries, and kind of grages and purples all on my arm and kind of do them all at once so that I won't have to go wash off my arm again. So let's go ahead and start with the corals. This is a lipstick that I purchased for myself long before I was ever on YouTube. It's NARS Catherine. And I've always like cherished it because I picked the color very carefully. I love the formula and I just haven't worn it very much because it's so bright. And I think I've sort of moved away from this color category, from like cherishing this color category, but I feel reluctant to let it go because it really is special to me. Here we have M Cosmetics Magic Hour, which is very, very similar, but just slightly softer and easier to wear. I've found myself reaching for this a lot since I received it in the mail as a gift. It's interesting, I even though they're so similar, I reach for this one constantly, whereas this one I kind of have to remind myself to reach for. This is ColourPop Dream Easy. It's definitely brighter and pinker than the others. I always love how this looks on me when I make myself wear it and I always have to make myself wear it. I never reach for it just out of excitement or out of, of my own accord or because I remember it. It's really interesting. This right here is a really special lipstick. I'm sure you won't be able to see the color because it's super fluorescent. The camera always Fs it up. The color name is Coral Gypsophilia. It was a limited edition Givenchy lip product, and it was a gift from a friend in a special moment and I do love it. So I'm gonna let go of Dream Easy because again, even though it's beautiful and I love it 
And it actually kind of reminds me of some of those amazing lipsticks that Lisa Eldridge recently released, Rainbow Spill is the name of one of them. It's in this that similar kind of super bright watermelon family. But I would wear all three of these before I would wear this one. I don't think I'm ready to let go of either my NARS lipstick or this Givenchy lipstick, and they don't get enough love from me. So I'm happy weeding out that ColourPop one to make room for these. And I'm gonna make one more effort to wear these a lot in between now and my next lipstick declutter, which will be several months from now. But if I feel the same way, if they have this had the same fate <laughs> then as they have up to this point, if I can't make a change with regards to them, I will let them go at that time. Uh, and of course, I'm going to keep Magic Hour. I've been, I've already been lavishing love on this lipstick. So those are going to be my three kind of watermelon, watermelony corals. All right, we're moving on to the Vampy Berries. So this is an Anna Sui lipstick. It's such an interesting shade. It's a really rich, deep color, but it's got, and it's like a, it's a berry, but it's got kind of a brown undertone. Really, really special. Here we have Charlotte Tilbury Bond Girl. I've wanted this for ages. I've tried it on to my lips at Nordstrom's like 50 times and worn it home. And once I even wore it home from the store and asked Joe what he thought, and he said he loved it, that made me want it even more. I never managed to get myself to buy it, but it was recently given to me as a gift, for which I am very grateful. This right here was a limited edition Lancome lip product. And I really like this. I really like the applicator. I like that little pointy end that it has. And I really, really like the color. It's kind of like a richer, darker version of Bond Girl. Bobbi Brown Telluride. Again, this has been on my wish list for a long time. Wow, those three look really, really, really similar. All right, so these are my four berries. None of them is really a berry because I don't like berry. Berries turn magenta on me. I don't really own any true berry lipsticks. They're, these are all really berry browns. So this right here, this beautiful Anna Sui lipstick, I've been hanging on to it because I didn't ha really have anything like this. I didn't have like a brown toned vampy lipstick. But remember Birkin Brown that we swatched in my browns? It's not the same, but it's similar enough that I don't need them both. And this I find easier to wear. It's um, more matte. It's a little bit more buildable. This is a super creamy and pigmented lipstick and I love it, but I just, I can let go of having lipstick in this color. The last declutter, I had like three lipsticks in this color. I had Fenty Griselda, I had this, I had like a NARS lip crayon that was this color. And I was like, I'm just gonna keep one. And I kept this one, but I don't need to wear that color. I'm happy just having Birkin Brown to give it a, a similar effect. Now, this is a little bit, this is trying for me because Bond Girl and Telluride have both been on my wish list for so long. That's these two right here. And it turns out now that I've received them both as gifts that they're really, really similar. The formulas are a little bit different and I get a lot of satisfaction from reaching for each one of these. Like each one of them brings me joy in a way that would would have, it would have my joy if I got rid of one of them. It would, I don't know if you guys can tell what I'm saying because you can't see me, but it, what I mean is it would have, H-A-L-V-E, it would cut my joy in half if I got rid of one, even though they're so relatively similar. They do feel a little bit different, perform a little bit differently on the lips. The one from Charlotte Tilbury is a little bit more matte and the Telluride one from Bobbi Brown is a little bit more balmy and a little bit more nourishing. So I'm gonna hang on to them both for now. Time will tell. It might be that one day I'll decide that I can let one of them go, but I'm very happy having both of them for now. And I, I don't think I wanna part with this one either. I actually, I haven't talked about the gloss on the other end of this, but I actually really like this gloss and I reach for it a lot. This is a great little product. It, it often goes with me when I travel. I think I will continue to happily wear all three of these, even though they look relatively similar in my arm swatches. All right, let's move on to the kind of grayy purples. This is NARS Pussy Control, kind of an iconic lipstick in my life. Maybelline Gone Grage, similarly, similarly iconic as far as I'm concerned to me. 
And then this is new to me. It's very Victoria. It's more of a nude grayish. They're really different from each other, all three of them. I think there are definitely no repeats in this category, and I really like all three of them. Very Victoria is a nude grayish, and I am keeping a lot of nudes. So this one is also on notice. I'm going to check back in at the end when I see how many I've kept overall. It might be on the chopping block, but these two are so unique to me and so beloved, and I wear them so frequently that I would not consider getting rid of them. For the time being, I will keep all three. All right, I'm ready for the reds. I feel like I need to be ruthless. I, I need to be hard on myself with these. I can already tell that it's going to be a struggle for me, so bear with me. I've got the oranges kind of grouped to this side. This is Bite Beauty Glacé. I really, really love this color, and I struggle to remember to reach for it because of the sticky goopiness of that formula. This right here is M Cosmetics Infinite Lip Cloud in Faded Clementine, one of my all-time favorite lip products. This is Erin's Faces Nancy. It is a stunning sort of tangerine, creamy lipstick. I really, really love that. Wow. And it's much more similar to Bite Puree than I have ever realized before. I also want to swatch right here who run this from ColourPop. I've struggled so much in the past with this because it's so messy. I really don't love this thingy. I don't love this thingy but I do love the color, so I've always had a really hard time considering parting with that. Actually, let's lay down this right here. This is one of those Lancome lip cajals. It's a super bright, oh no, the tip just broke off. That's so sad. I love that little pointy tip. It's a really, really lovely bright matte orange. I really love that lipstick. And now let's go in with Tom Ford Wild Ginger, a bit shinier and a bit redder than the one from Lancome. My two little Pat McGrath lippies. This one is Obsessed, and this one right here is Elson. Obsessed is more of a, an orange red, and Elson is more of a blue red. Speaking of blue reds, this is the Discontinued M Cosmetics Infinite Lip Cap Cloud in Crimson. A very, very beautiful, rich blue red. And I'm going to swatch Charlotte Tilbury Legendary Queen next to it. As I suspected, they are similar but not the same. Food for thought. All right, here down here are my two sort of soft pinky reds. I consider them reds even though they're sort of pinks. Bobbi Brown Babe and NARS Famous Red, sort of like a fluorescent pinky red. And then lastly, I didn't know where to put NARS Shiop because it's a super bright pink and I don't have a section for pinks because I don't really own any pink lipsticks. This like super bright milky magenta is an amazing, I love wearing this color. I absolutely love it. I mean like I've gotten a lot of use out of it and I'm definitely keeping it. I just, I didn't know where to put it because it's not similar en enough to anything to make sense but I, I think of it like a red, like it, it occupies in my heart and in my, what would you say, my process of deciding what to put on my face. It occupies the same position as a red because it's such a bold statement lip. So it makes sense to, uh, to have it here. Okay. Wow. All right. I, I'm feeling optimistic. I think that because I love this Aaron's Faces formula so much, I think I can finally let go of both Bite Puree and Who Run This from ColourPop. The, it's these three right here. So the Erin's Faces has a bit of shine. It's not super matte, but I know that it can be blotted down to be pretty matte. It's so nourishing. It's so easy to apply. It looks so good on the lips. I just, I reach for it all the time. I absolutely love it. These two lipsticks, I love the color and I just struggle to reach for them because of the formulas. This one, because it's super pigmented and messy and gets everywhere and because it's kind of broken in the tube. This one, because it's so glossy and goopy and also gets everywhere and just isn't pleasant on my lips. So I, I'm so excited that I have this because I finally have found a lipstick in this color family 
with a formula that I love. And that means that I can let go of these, which have made it through so many declutters when they maybe shouldn't have, because I didn't want to let go of having like a rusty orange lip color. That is exciting and kind of a relief to me. I'm definitely going to keep the Infinite Lip Cloud in, favorite cl in um, Faded Clementine. That is maybe my all-time favorite lipstick. It's definitely one of the best. And I'm going to keep this as well, this really, really orange, statement orange. It's kind of my most statement-y fluorescent orange. And I'm also going to keep Tom Ford Wild Ginger, even though they're relatively similar, they're definitely not the same. Um, both of these are struggling to show on camera. I can tell just by looking at the monitor, but I really, really love these two guys. They're my two super bright statement lips. I think I can let go of these. I love this formula. And I kept these in my first declutter in, of, of which they were a part because the formula is so amazing. And because I, I felt like I didn't have like a rich orangey matte and a rich blue red matte. And it just turned out that it didn't matter that I didn't have that in other formulas. I still didn't reach for these very often because I didn't like using these dinky little bullets. So it doesn't matter that I don't have exact dupes. It doesn't matter that the colors are slightly unique to my collection. And they vary slightly from all of the other ones I'm keeping. I just don't love these little guys. I'm really grateful that I got the chance to try them and wear them in some videos and play with them, but I just don't love them. So I'm going to let them go. Shockingly, I'm, I'm going to let this one go as well. I didn't have sort of a true blue red like true middle blue red that I loved. So I kept keeping this in case I ever wanted to wear that color. And of course, because I'm not in love completely with this exact product, that meant that I never reached for it, even though it was my only true blue red. And it's so similar to Legendary Queen, this Charlotte Tilbury lipstick, which is new to me. But this one has a little bit more of a rusty undertone that I it makes me like it 1000 times better, even though the difference is ever so slight. I know that I'm going to be reaching for this all the time. Like I, I, I want to put it on right now. I'm peeing my pants to start wearing this lipstick constantly. I've never felt that way about this red infinite lip cloud. And to top it all off, when Zane was here, she was playing with my makeup and she tried this on and it looked so good on her that I almost just gave it to her right at that moment. <laughs> like I was almost just like, keep it because it's discontinued. So she can't buy it for herself. I didn't then, but I, now I'm, um, it's just more incentive to part with it because I know exactly to whom I will be giving it. So this one can go. All right. And then these last three are all keepers to me. I wear all three of them a lot and I know exactly which place they occupy for me. I'm already doing a really good job of loving on these and cherishing them. So they don't really need to be considered as potential declutters, but I've done a good job. I did a good job with the reds and the pinky reds. I mean, especially if you consider the fact that these three aren't really true reds. That means that these are my red, like these are my red. Oh, and this is an orange. These are oranges. These are my reds, y'all. These are my red lipsticks now. I'm, I'm down to three beautiful reds. It's this one, this one, and this one. And that suits me just fine. Here's how I did with lipsticks. These are the keeps and these are the giveaways. It's not like a huge percentage, but I wasn't expecting to cut my lipsticks down by half. It's not like that. I'm just trying to kind of get it back so that they fit elegantly inside of my lipstick storage. And I think that this is a pretty good first pass when it comes to that goal, because most of these are lipsticks that I've been carefully chosen that I, I deeply love that have made it through declutters or that I've wanted forever, things like that. And so it makes sense that I wouldn't be just super ruthless, but I, so I think that this is respectable. I think I'm on the right track. All right, let's knock out the lip liners really quickly because I don't have that many of them compared to the other categories. And I think it's going to go pretty quickly. I don't feel the need to get rid of a lot of these, partly because this is a kind of product that I really use. I, I mean, I use like the heck out of it. I just, I use them a lot. You can see these three, these are, I mean, like I, I sharpen them a lot and they're, they're rapidly shrinking, right? Um, these ones are new to me. These three ones from Charlotte Tilbury. 
I'm just gonna go ahead and swatch them all out on the back of my hand. I'll try to group like with like so that we can compare them. So here we have Charlotte Tilbury Savage Rose. The only other one that's remotely like it is Love Bug from ColourPop. That's kind of like a deeper, more brownie red. Gosh, they're actually more different than I expected. Let's see how Walk of Shame looks next to that. Okay, those are a little more similar. Walk of Shame isn't quite as brown as Love Bug, but it's closer. And here we have Charlotte Tilbury Savage Rose. Oh gosh, and that so that's even more mauve. And even though they're all different, one is like a red, one is like a brown red, one is sort of a rose, and then one is much more mauve. These are all like the same to me <laughs> when it comes to use. They're all pretty much the same to me. Oh yeah, so this is NYX London. This is one of my all-time favorites. That's a little drier. I absolutely love this color and the formula is nice too, pretty tenacious. This is Bite Beauty uh, 022. I think Bite doesn't have, Bite doesn't really have name. This is Givenchy Lip Brown. This is probably my favorite of all of my lip liners. This, I purchased this years ago, brand new, before my no buy year, before I was on YouTube, and it was full size. That's how much of it I've used. This is one of my all-time favorite, kind of like my top five. Like this is one of my top five products. If I had to pick just five color cosmetics to keep, you know, if I were doing one of those tags, this would be my lip product. Wherever Walnut by Makeup Forever. Pretty similar in terms of how I like to to wear it, pretty similar to the Givenchy one. And then this is a very cool toned lip pencil that I bought in an extremely misguided moment years ago before I really understood undertones and preferences and what I was doing. So there's everything. Hmm. This I wore once on my lips for a video and some of you guys were like, I love that lip color on you. And I was like, yeah, I have this one cool toned lip pencil and it's great because it's different from everything in my collection, blah, 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 blah. But the reality is it's totally not my style. I almost never reach for it. I mean, I never, I never really reach for it. And it's nearly full size. It's, it's, you know, barely touched. It's barely been sharpened because I don't really use it that much. So this can go, even though it's, more different from anything, from everything. You know what I mean? It's like really different from everything. It can go. I definitely want to keep the Givenchy lip liner. I mean, like I said, it's, it's my, it's my precious. It's my most beloved. And I love that you can kind of see that it's the perfect marriage of all of these other ones. Like it's perfectly balanced for me. I really, really love that. I'm definitely going to keep NYX London. I have a lip liner in the purgatory box. Where is it? All right. So I just grabbed this from the purgatory box. It's by LA Girl and it's their lip liner in the color Cafe. I think I may be keeping this lip liner in Cafe. It's really nice. It's a little bit browner than these other ones, but I think that I can go ahead and let go of these two. It's almost like they, they're so little at this point. They're so short that they're just kind of bumping around in my makeup collection, taking up space and kind of causing problems for causing storage problems, if that makes sense. And so I'm going to go ahead and just let go of them. I feel like these three all sort of serve the same purpose to me, but I love this one so much more than I love these. And I think at this point I would rather finish this and repurchase it than keep these. That's weird. I can't believe I'm doing that, but it just makes sense. I guess I've never really taken a hard look at my lip liners. Now I have sort of these three shades of rosy nudie brown, but they're all a little bit different. That's that's fine. That's enough. That's enough. I don't need those little ones. When I swatched these all out, I was disappointed to see that I actually really love the color of Love Bug compared to these, but I've struggled so much to use this. It's like it's too creamy, too pigmented, too dark, and it defeats the purpose of a lip liner. It makes it harder for me to complete a lip look in a decent amount of time. I don't like this plasticky wood that you sharpen. I actually really hate that. I, I actually hate this. I mean, not, you know, I actually do. I'm not keeping it. 
I definitely want to keep Savage Rose because it's the most red. So like if I need, if I want to line my lips for a red lipstick, this is going to be the one. I think I'm going to keep them all. Yeah. I mean, it's nice to have Bond Girl as a lip liner. I think I'll really love wearing that all over my lips as kind of a, a ruddier, more stainy version of Bond Girl. And same with Walk of Shame. I, I don't, I, it's just nice to have these colors. They're, I'm going to enjoy wearing them and experimenting with them. They, I will, I think I'll reckon with them more thoroughly the next time I do a declutter of this kind. Sorry, I just looked up at the monitor and I see I've drifted, like oh, I've drifted. I was like doing the declutter up here in the corner. <laughs> Sorry about that. All right, I'm going to keep this. This isn't six lip liners and shades of kind of reddish rose and nude. It isn't out of control for me, especially because I love this style of product so much. I need to move on. All right, let's take care of the balmy type products first. So I have this Burt's Bees Pomegranate Moisturizing Lip Balm. It's it, it barely has any color. Like there's no reason. I don't need to swatch these guys. It's, it barely has any color, but I actually really like the very slight flush that it gives to my lips. And I really like the smell of this. Lauren gave this to me and I almost gave it away untouched. And then one day I impulsively tried it and I was like, I love this. So I definitely want to keep that. I've actually been wearing that a lot. This one from Herbivore, I love. This came in the Velvet Report box that was sent to me as PR. And I really enjoyed that box. I really respect Velvet Report. They're an awesome brand doing really cool stuff. And as you can see, I've hit quote unquote pan on this product. I wear this at night a lot. I really, really like this product. I'm definitely going to go ahead and use this up. And these are both CBD products. This I got at DragCon. I really like it because it's jasmine scented. The question for me is do I need four chapstick type things? Two in a pot and two in sticks. I think it's nice to have one clear one in a stick. It's a little bit easier to apply. I consider these to fulfill kind of the same purpose. And so I'm going to go ahead and hang on to this one because sometimes it's nice to have one that's a little bit easier to apply. And actually this I think I can let go of. If you watched my reckoning, then you know I decided to keep both of these even though they're relatively similar. And now that I'm doing this, that seems like it was kind of a ridiculous choice. They look exactly the same on my lips, even though Saucy is a little pinker, that's this one, and Heavy is a little bit more of a kind of gray nude. They just, they do the same things to my, the same thing to my lips. They look the same on my lips. I just don't need both of them. So I'm going to give Saucy away. That's the more pink one. And I'm going to keep Heavy. That's a slightly darker and more nude one. I really, really like this product, but I, I can't see myself panning it so soon that I'll be glad that I have a backup. If I end up loving it so much by the time it's done, I can just buy myself a backup. I don't need to keep another one hanging around. This is the Erin Spaces Mineral Lip Gloss. It is such a gorgeous product. It's sort of peachy, very, very shimmery, super neutral, and it's completely unscented and like effortless to wear. It's holding down the fort for me as like the basic, excellent lip gloss. It's also very, very tenacious. I think that the quality of this formula belies people's worries and claims that mineral makeup or natural makeup, makeup that doesn't have problematic ingredients, can't be good quality or can't be tenacious or can't be as beautiful as makeup that's packed with a bunch of problematic chemicals because this is one of the best lip glosses I've ever tried. And it's especially perfect if you are allergic to a lot of stuff because it's totally unscented and, and non-irritating. This, oh, I, I didn't swatch everything. I just went ahead and started decluttering. Let's swatch everything. Super glittery holographic lip topper, obsessed. This is a buxom lip plumping lip gloss in the shade pink champagne. It's very, very pale on me. And I tend to just use it as a lip plumper. And then I usually wipe it off and put a lip product on top because I just am after its plumping qualities. This is the Urban Decay Hi-Fi Shine Cushion Lip Gloss in the shade Naked that I painstakingly selected and purchased towards the beginning of my budget year. 
These are the two Revlon glasses that I was recently given at Beautycon. This is highly pigmented compared to the other ones and it is in the color Indulge in It. And this is in the shade Blissed Out. Then these are two L'Oreal Color Reese Shines. I, Color Reese Shines. I recently purchased these actually. I don't think I've talked about that yet. I don't know if that video will have gone live yet, but that's Glossy Fawn. And this one is Dazzling Doe. I absolutely love both of these and I actually ended up liking Dazzling Doe the best, which I didn't necessarily expect because it's so weird and grayish. This should probably have gone in my lipsticks. So the Lila B Lip and Cheek Tint in be lovely. It's really a lipstick formula. It should have gone in my nudes. I just think of it as kind of a balm, probably because of the packaging, so it ended up here in the glosses and balms, but that's what it looks like right there. I already dealt with the other one of these. I'm just going to keep one. I'm just going to keep this one. I am going to keep the Erin's Faces Mineral Lip Gloss. I reach for this a lot, and I really, really like it, and as you can see, it's kind of my one most neutral and sheerest gloss if that makes sense. I am also going to keep this holographic <laughs> lip gloss topper. I really, really, really like this. It's so fun. But this I'm going to give away because I only need one powerful lip plumper in my life and that's this. And this was given to me. It was it came in a in a care package. This one, however, I purchased and I, I, I selected it and I selected it specifically for this purpose. So I'm gonna go ahead and hang on to this one. I'm finding myself reticent to part with either of these because I've, I've been enjoying both of them so much lately. I just really, really, really like the way they look on the lips. Oh, you can see, see this? These Urban Decay glasses have started to darken. See how much darker they've gotten over the past just five minutes that I've been talking? That's more what they look like on the lips. They have that really, really dark, rich color. Really, you can see how different they've become. Gosh, no, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna stress myself out over it. I really like these. I'm still enjoying them quite a lot, so I'm gonna keep them for the time being. These two as well, I just bought them, so I'm gonna keep them for the time being. And honestly, this as well. I really, really love this. This just made it through a reckoning recently. It's a beautiful formula. Maybe once I'm looking at everything together, I'll swatch this against some of my other nude lip products and see how it fares. But for now, I'm going to keep it at least through one last round. Speaking of which, I'm going to wash my arm off and we're going to do that last round now. All right, so here's everything that made it through the first pass, ostensibly everything that I want to keep. And in this box are the things that I decided to let go of. There are, I think, 18 things in here. I, I tried to count them. There are roughly 18 products here that I'm getting rid of. I don't know because I haven't tried, but I suspect that this group of products would fit relatively well into my storage. So I would be okay with leaving it at this, but I am going to just go through and kind of feel it out a little bit and maybe do a little bit of of swatching, second round of swatching, and just see if there's anything that I, I could let go additionally at this point. I did some swatching and I've decided that I can part with both Confession and Very Victoria, these two Charlotte Tilbury lipsticks. The category of kind of nudes, brown nudes, neutral lips was by far the largest, the most overgrown. So I've swatched all of them here. I mean, these are a couple that I want to keep and both of these as well. And there are subtle differences, but in many ways they all look the same. Like this is the same lip. <laughs> This is like all the same lip to me. And the colors that are very similar to these all tend to be ones that are either my favorite formula or ones that I've hand picked and purchased myself. And I also think that each one of these will make a beautiful gift. I'll be really excited to be able to give these away. So it's not that they're not beautiful. It's not that I don't think they're great lipsticks. It's not that I'm not very grateful to have received them in the mail. It's just that I don't need so much of the same type of thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and add these to the giveaway box. That makes 
at a total of 20 lip products that I am willing to part with today. And now I am going to attempt to put all of these away into my two lipstick storage containers. And we'll see if I've achieved my goal of whittling it down to a, a number of lipsticks that will fit elegantly into the storage I was formerly using. It all fits with sort of a tiny bit of room to spare. I didn't have too much rhyme or reason about the way that I put these back, although I did put some of my glosses in this sort of front and center location. This sits on top of my vanity and these are the ones that are closest to me. And so I decided to move some glosses into that spot because formerly I was keeping the glosses put away in this drawer because I didn't reach for glosses as much. But I want to encourage myself to spend some more time with my glosses as the summer wanes. So that meant some of my lip products are being put away. Some of my, you know, more standard lip products are being put away, but I put things like Het Low and Pussy Control and Beige Babe, like products that I, I often think of of my own accord and look for. I put those away. And the ones that I tend to forget about, I tried to put out front and center so that I'll remember about them. I feel like I can cherish each and every one of these. I feel like I can make super clear decisions about which ones I want to wear on which day. I feel like I can keep all of this in my makeup mind palace. Okay, lips. I think that, uh, I, I think I'm going to be kind of disorganized about this. I think I'm just going to take everything out, all of the lipsticks and glosses all together, and then I'm just going to put them all back. And when I put them all back, I'm going to assess each one as I go and see if there are any that I can let go of. This is a tough category for me because this is a category where I feel like I have the most excess. Like I just, I, I feel like it's busting out of my storage and I don't like that. But I also really, really love lip products. And also a lot of them tend to come in PR. Like this is a, a category that for me, it's been a lot harder to kind of keep it under control given that I do accept things for review from time to time. With palettes, it's been a lot easier with eyeshadows because it's easy to just lightly test an eyeshadow formula or a palette and then give it away. It's a little bit harder to know what to do with whole collections of lip products or with just a handful of lip products. They're harder to sanitize and they're in some ways harder for me to part with and they technically take up less room. But if you keep keeping them and keep keeping them because they take up less room, then they start taking up more room. So I'm just gonna lay everything out on the table and do my best. This is in the wrong place, but this is a single eyeshadow product that I am actually happy to let go of. It's the Glossier Sky Wash in the shade Echo, and um, I, I got it to test, but I just, I never use it. It's perfectly fine. It's okay. It's okay. I, I just never really use it, and I, I don't need it here taking up space. This is another thing that I actually think I'm going to let go of. It's the Illamasqua Sealing Gel. It's a little liquid that turns powder shadows into liquids. And I, it was, again, it came in PR. I tested it. It was perfectly fine. And I just I haven't thought about it since then. And I, I don't really need this kind of thing. So um, I'm going to give it away. Okay, I believe that everything is in frame and it has started to rain, which is very unusual for Los Angeles. I hope that if you can hear the pitter patter of rain on the leaves that it is just comforting and adds ambiance to the video. So again, I'm not doing that thing where I, you know, separate out all my reds and all my nudes and all my things and then like, see how many of this do I need, all my glosses and stuff. I'm not doing that. I'm just going through, it's kind of like a rapid fire sparks joy principle kind of thing. I'm just going to keep the ones that I feel like I love and I am going to let go of any that 
kind of present themselves to me as being ones that I can let go of, but this is in the wrong place. It's actually a lip liner. This is pretty new to me. It's the ZC lipstick from the Picasso collection. I've actually been keeping this out on my vanity and I love, I look at it every day and I love looking at it. I love having it there. Erin's Faces Lip Gloss. This is in Sunnyside. I find this really, really useful for finishing a look because it's clear, it has no scent and it is really shiny. Clarins Instant Light Natural Lip Perfector. I grab this a lot when my lips are feeling kind of crusty. It smells like cotton candy and I love that. I'm also gonna keep the e.l.f. Ride or Die Lip Balm. It's nice and rich and thick. I'm actually gonna keep this M Cosmetics Lip Cushion. It almost didn't make it through the reckoning, but I have been wearing it since then. I've continued to test it. And even though it's, it's kind of thick and pigmented and shiny, I love the finish. I love the way it looks on camera. There's just something about it. It's kind of sultry. These are some gorgeous bullet lipsticks that I really love. I'm going to go ahead and fill this container with bullet lipsticks that I really love. Actually, this one's too long to fit comfortably in there, but I'm going to put the shorter bullet lipsticks that I really love all back in here. Ah, here's one that I can let go of. So this is from Lancome and my friend Simbri sent this to me in a care package. It is a beautiful, rich color. I mean, like you can tell if you know my taste, you can tell why she thought of me. I kept it through the reckoning because I was like, it's so gorgeous. And I just, I never really reached for it. It has a very old school lipstick finish and smell. I have a number of lip products that are, you know, in this realm, kind of this color because I'm so attracted to it. And so I, you know, I just feel like it's kind of extra. I'm gonna let this go. I keep my Glossier Vanilla Lips back here and I definitely wanna keep all five of them. That's one of my favorite lipstick formulas, if not my favorite lipstick formula of all time. So just now I was reaching for cream bullet lipsticks. I was trying to put only things that are either cream or matte that are like, you know, opaque into this little container. And now I'm gonna separate out all of the bullet lipsticks that have sort of like a shiny or semi sheer finish. Mm, this one doesn't, but well, maybe. No, it's too short to go in there. Ah, here's one that I can let go of. I love the color of this Erin's Faces lipstick. It's in the shade Nancy, but um, I've had it for a couple of years and the last time I went to wear it, it had that kind of crayon smell. I think that it started to go off. need to keep this. This was a little, you know, mini, like a sample size mini of the Ilia Balmy Gloss. It's a beautiful product. I just, I don't like these dinky little minis. And I've gotten to the point where when I place orders from Sephora, which I really rarely do, I rarely put a thing like this in my, my cart because I just don't want to deal with it, even if it's something that I would like to try. And it's for this reason. It's like, I like it, it's totally fine. It's just, I have all these beautiful full-size products, many of which I bought with my money. So I'm not gonna value this as highly. And this is another thing. This made it through my declutter, the Lila B Lovingly Lip Tinted Lip Oil in the shade Be Remarkable. It is really pretty. And you know, I, I said in my reckoning that I had tested it uh, with just with a Q-tip because I didn't wanna sully it. And I really liked it and I decided to keep it. And then I put it back in its box and I haven't been able to bring myself to break it out and use it. 
uh, because I have so much and I just wanna give it away brand new. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Change my mind. Mm, I love the Ofra gloss and truffle. I've been wearing this a lot lately. It's so beautiful. Mm, I think I wanna put some lip glosses in here uh, and maybe put some, you know what maybe I'll do? I'll Maybe I'll put these M Cosmetics products in here because I love them so much and I just always forget to wear them. But I feel like if they were all consolidated in a drawer like this where I could open it and see all the shades side by side, for some reason standing them up in this kind of thing doesn't work as well for me. I'm gonna put them all in here. And then I'm gonna put some glosses in here. This is a gloss that I've almost panned. It's the Urban Decay Hi-Fi Shine Cushion Gloss in the shade Naked. And I purchased this pretty early on in my first budget year. So it's almost exactly two years old. And it's pretty much panned. Like I know it's hard to tell because it's on the, maybe you can kind of see, but um, you know, I've, I've been scraping the, the very bottom of it. So I'm gonna go ahead you know what, I'm gonna go ahead and, and call it on this. I just have so many beautiful things here, so many beautiful lip glosses. And I have been wearing this faithfully like several times a week for the past couple of weeks, kind of trying to get as much out of it as I could, like trying to get good use out of it. And for the past week or so, it has been very, very gummy and I haven't really been able to get a full thick application. So even though, you know, I could technically still like maybe warm it up and really work on it and well, it doesn't have a really a stopper you can pop out. It's hard to call it with stuff like this. Like you can't get total pan like you can with an actual eyeshadow that you pan. Um, I think there just comes a point when you have to be like, you know what, it's life is over. And I feel like that point has come with this. These two, these chunkier gloss products, well, this isn't a gloss, but these chunkier, and it's not even chunky, it's just beautiful. This chunky type of gloss thing, I tend to keep sitting up on my vanity. And I think I'm gonna pull this one out and sit up on my vanity, as, sit it up on my vanity as well. It's also two years old, it's the In, In Beauty Lip Glaze, and I really do love it. Like it's very, very in, indulgent and juicy and gooey, but I think I probably need to do what I did with the Urban Decay with it and like work on totally panning it because it's time is probably coming up. So I'm gonna start keeping that on top of my vanity as well. So here's what I decluttered from that round. This wasn't a lipstick, it just was in the, it was in the wrong place. And this Illamasqua liquid as well was in the wrong place. And then I let go of these five things. So this one was very old and pretty much done. This is brand new, I decided not to even start using it. And then these were just like three littler guys. So it's funny, it was only these five things. And you know, they're pretty little and this one's pretty skinny, but I feel like I've gotten a lot of space. I don't feel like this collection is busting at the seams anymore. It feels much more reasonable to me. And it might also be partly because I reorganized it, but this is great. I feel good about this. These are all my liners. I kind of go back and forth about whether I want to keep my lip liners and my eyeliners separate. I recently started keeping them together. I do really like it when my lip liners are separate though. I think I might I might go back to separating them out. Maybe I'll store them. I have this little glass cup that I sometimes put bobby pins in. Maybe I'll put some of my lip liners in there after today. I started keeping these NARS 
crayons. This used to be one of my favorite formulas. And I mean, in theory, I would say that it still is the NARS Velvet Matte Lip Pencil. I started keeping it with my liners in the hopes that that would cause me to remember to use it more. And you know, technically these can be used as liners, especially if you sharpen them up really sharp. I have the shades Famous Red and Pussy Control, but I still have not been remembering to wear them. And I wish I would. I mean, it's not gonna cause me to declutter them right now. I would still like to renew my efforts. Uh, I really love them, but they, they have been languishing. Maybe I should pull them back out and not keep them with my liners anymore. Okay, here's the thing, y'all. I love lip liner. And these right here are some of my most worn, most used makeup products from the entire year. I just can't even see one that I haven't used like crazy. Well, the ones that I use the least are the red leaning Charlotte Tilbury lip cheats. I use Bond Girl a lot, but you know, I'd kind of been using Walk of Shame whenever I needed a red before I got this red. I guess I haven't used Savage Rose that much, but it's still not telling me like, Hannah, my time has come. You know what I mean? Like I just, I think this is great. This is a great little collection of lip liners for me. I'm just going to keep them. I decided to rank all of my lip products, literally. So indiscriminate of whether they're lipsticks or glosses or whatever, I'm just gonna rank them, I think in order of like how much I wanna wear them at this moment. And so it's going to be an impulsive and very slipshod ranking. Like we're doing it with the full knowledge that how I feel about these products today might change by tomorrow. You know what I mean? So this isn't like an official best of all time, my absolute favorites. I'm just going to be kind of putting them in order of how much I feel like wearing them and then, you know, talking about them as I go. And it's going to be a way of you know, just like getting into my collection, maybe thinking about decluttering like the ones that end up at the bottom. Okay, I'm intimidated because it's kind of hard to pick like your favorite out of a big pile like this. I think that maybe I'm going to have to do like a preliminary sort. So I'm gonna push the pile to the side and then I'm going to collect, like I'm gonna make a smaller pile of the ones that I love the most. And then I think I'll be able to like deal with that pile. Aha, I haven't, you guys don't know about this. I got this for review when I got the Fenty Ease Drop. I was like, oh, I'll review them in the same video. And then I completely forgot to talk about this in the Ease Drop video. I was gonna do like a two Fenty product thing and this just got like immediately absorbed into my collection and completely forgotten about. So I'm not gonna go ahead and like do a full review of it in this video, but I'll make sure that I apply it soon on my lips in a Talking Heads video and give you a full review of it because that is after all why I acquired it. Okay, I feel like that's a pretty good start. I'm just gonna rank these, the ones that I pulled out, and then I'm gonna do like a next round, of like the next level down. But there might be some that I really love that I forgot about that I couldn't see just cause there's so much before my eyes. So I'm gonna have to revisit at the end and do a final pass and make sure that everything's right. The lip product that I feel the most like wearing these days is this one. It's the new Erin's Faces Lip Gloss. It's the shade Early Glow, the Fruit Smoothie Lip Gloss. I can't swatch everything, obviously, but um, I will swatch this because it's the number one one and also because it's a new product. 
but you know, it's not really shown to its best advantage in a swatch. You really have to see it on the lips. The reason that I like it so much and the reason that it's number one for me right now is that it's very shiny. Like it really, it makes my lips look like sort of spangly, really spangly, like, like the sunlight spangling on the ocean level of spangly. And also it tastes and smells like real strawberry smoothie rather than fake fruit. And I've never encountered that in a gloss. It's a great product. I think the Tower 28 gloss in Magic is the one that I, the next feel the most like wearing. I've kind of been wearing these guys interchangeably. And I have also been reaching a lot for this Fenty one, probably because this is the Fenty Pro Kisser Luscious Lip Balm in Cocoa Drizzle, probably because I'm testing it, but you know, that's, it's still a valid reason to be reaching for something a lot. My other Tower 28 gloss, the one in Oat, has also been getting a lot of wear. I do feel a lot like wearing that. I feel a lot like going back to wearing Glossier Pony as much as possible. So that one I've been reaching for a lot. Clarins Instant Light, you can see I've still been going for these like balmy, glossy things a lot. I've also been really tempted to wear this one from Flower, the CBD lip glaze, even though it's in such a bright pink. And I think that after that, I can say that some of these lipsticks are up. Revlon Mink, it's like the best. I love this lipstick. It's like my favorite. <laughs> it's not just my favorite drugstore lipstick. I think it's my favorite lipstick. I've also been really feeling like wearing Redwood Construction, which is my, it's the Finding Ferdinand lipstick that I made, but it's the sheer one. It's the balmy one. I've actually been mixing this a lot with the Fenty. I've ended up loving this M Cosmetics Venetian Rose lip cushion. I've been feeling like wearing it a lot. I haven't been wearing Faded Clementine very much, but I kind of feel like returning to it. This is also one of the oldest lip products in my collection. It's probably getting really quite old. And so I feel like I need to take advantage of it and like wear it while I still can. I always feel like wearing my Gucci lip wall in the shade Goldie Red, a stunner, especially as the weather warms up, it's more and more attractive. When I caught sight of Nars Catherine in the pile, I was like, ooh yeah, I really feel like wearing that. This is such a pretty Nars lipstick and I love this formula. I feel like this NARS Audacious formula never gets old. This is my other Revlon cream lipstick in Rum Raisin. It's not quite as brown as Mink, so I don't like it quite as much, but I still do feel like wearing it. The M Cosmetics lip liner in Mink. It's like a really great brown. And then this is the YSL Slim Glow Matte. I just love the sort of rusty orangey color. I'm actually gonna swatch all of the lipsticks. Ooh, Nars Catherine. Gotta get that on my face. Okay, so there is the M Cosmetics Lip Cushion in Venetian Rose. It is a very thick, really thick, nourishing formula. There's Revlon Mink, my favorite <laughs> lipstick. There is Goldie Red, which is the Gucci Lip Voile. This is the YSL Slim Glow Matte in the shade 214, that kind of like brick color. That right there is Revlon Rum Raisin, a classic. And then that's Nars Catherine. I love how it's really just like a glowy coral. It lights up the lips, but without, without getting too much into the realm of watermelon. I really, really love that color. Mmm, this makes me excited for wearing lipstick in the summer. I'm glad that he did this because I've been just reaching for these glosses. You know what I mean? Like it's just been like this stuff on repeat, but lining all of these up makes me realize that I'm feeling really excited about lipstick right now. So I feel like it's gonna help me diversify. Okay, so those are the ones and those are the top. Those are like the, that's like the first row. Top row, top shelf. Let's pick another group, like another round. So if I didn't have those and all that I had were these, what would I feel the most like wearing?
Okay, let's go ahead and rank these guys. I immediately picked out some more glosses that I love. These are some of my classic glosses, my, my all-time favorites, the Fenty Beauty Gloss Bomb and the Revlon Super Lustrous, the gloss in Blissed Out and Indulge In It. I really love the way these make my lips look. I really love the way that they feel, but I just have been reaching for other glosses, like these paler, more neutral glosses, basically, instead. And... Uh, so I feel like these are kind of like the, the next up of the next wave down. Like it kind of makes sense for me that if I didn't have any of these, the first thing that I would do would be to reach for these other glosses. So I feel like they, yeah, they're like at the top of the pile. Although maybe the Revlon Super Lustrous, the gloss in Blissed Out would be first because I really, really love wearing this. I think that would be the order. One, two, three. But then probably, actually, you know, probably Glossier Genius might even come second because even though I like Pony the best because it's neutral, more neutral, I really like Genius as well. It's a little bit pinker, but I just love that formula so much. By that same token, I'm going to put this one, which is Disco, next on the list. And then after that, I think this ZC lipstick, which since I wore it in a video recently, I've just been wanting to wear it so much. I love it. It's a shade M05. And you know, it is a red, but it's just this really soft, special red. And I love how it looks. I love the bananas ornate packaging and I love the feel of it on the lips. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and put that next. I've been wanting to wear that more and more. And it made me Think again of Velvet Dragon from Lisa Eldridge, which I keep forgetting that I own. Like, it just didn't register with me, even though I got it and I reviewed it and I really love it. I've been wanting to remember it more, so I'm gonna put that next. The Persona glosses, especially the coral one, I've been thinking about lately and wanting to pull back out. So let's actually put the coral one next. I like honey as well, but I find that the kind of opaque brown quality makes it a little bit less easy to wear. There's something about coral that's just like my fave. Actually, I'm gonna move this up. I feel like wearing this more than any of these. I've been loving having this in my collection. This is the lipstick that Buffalo Beauty Boy made for me with Finding Ferdinand. It's this pink that's really different for me, but it's also very wearable for me. And I keep remembering it and I keep thinking about it. So I'm gonna put it next. These M Cosmetics True Glosses are a little bit hard for me to wear because they're so pigmented, but I love the smell and the texture and the look. And so I think that they are gonna be next. This is the Color Riche Shine from L'Oreal and Dazzling Doe. And it also can be a little bit hard for me to wear because it doesn't provide totally full coverage and yet it's a really different color from my lips and a bit lighter than them. So sometimes I feel like it's a little bit fussy, but I do love the nourishing feel of it and I really love the color. I have been feeling like wearing it lately. I'm actually gonna bump it up a little bit ahead of these lipsticks because it's just the season. Like it's the kind of thing that I'm really liking now. And yeah, I pulled Glossy, the Glossier Generation G in Leo. This is a great lipstick. I I don't know. I It doesn't make me want to reach for it in the way that some of these other ones do, but I do really, I, I've been gravitating towards it because it's that sort of like effortless sheer thing that I've been really into. So that's why I put it in this tier. It's just kind of at the bottom of this tier. In fact, I'm gonna go ahead and put the Persona Gloss in Honey. This is M Cosmetics Cashmere Cream, which came in PR a while ago and I just, I, I like it and I just keep forgetting to like get proper use out of it. So that was why I pulled it. And I'm gonna put the Glossier one at the end. So yeah, I think that's good. This is the next, the next level down and in this order. Hmm. All right. I feel like we're we're passing into the more difficult territory now because, you know, it's like, how many did I pick so far? So, so far there are 32 things. So everything that's left, like all of these other lip products that are left, it's like there are 32 lip products that I feel more like wearing than them. So it kind of becomes arbitrary, I feel, like whether 
like how much I feel like wearing like if it if it's a thing that it's like the 40th I feel like wearing it the 40th of everything it's harder to distinguish between like the 40th and, and the 41st you know what I mean um, but I'm just gonna keep doing it this this isn't that serious it's just it's a lark you know so let's keep going Okay, I think that these are probably the ones that would be up next. And I realized that I had forgotten about Maybelline Gone Grage, which is a lipstick I really like wearing in the spring, even though it's like this grungy, cool tone. For some reason, I feel like this is a really cool spring, late spring, early summer color. And so I actually, in remembering it, I, it makes me want to wear it like quite a lot. Like when I when I realized I had forgotten to incorporate it, I got a powerful desire to wear it. So I'm actually gonna put it like at the beginning, I'm putting it at the top and I'm gonna revisit at the end and kind of figure out where I want it to go. This is kind of what I would call like the, the glosses of the next tier down. I, I like the Bobbi Brown gloss, but it just, it's so much like the Tower 28 ones and the one from Flower Beauty, but it's just much stickier. So I just haven't been wanting to wear it as much. I like the color, but it just, I just haven't been wanting to wear it. I just don't feel like much like wearing it right now. It's really nourishing. It's very high end. I want to keep it around, but I just don't feel that much like wearing it. I think that if given the choice, I would prefer Ofra Truffle. This is a really great juicy feeling gloss. I really like the feel of this and the look is absolutely gorgeous. There's something about the color of this one. It's not, or not the color, the taste, the, the smell. It's not the same as most of the Ofra glosses. It's got this like really fruity, almost like blue raspberry smell that I don't like very much. So that's why it didn't make it into the top. But in terms of the look and the and the feel, the juiciness of it, I really love it. So it's actually gonna go at the top of this tier. And then the Bobbi Brown. I like the Maybelline Lifter Gloss. I think that this color, which is the color Crystal, doesn't look quite as, it's a little bit harder for me to wear because it's like bronzy than maybe uh, one with a little bit more pink in it would be for me. Just there's something about the combination of the color with the texture that means that I'm not reaching for this as much as I thought that I would be, but it's such a great gloss. And then I also really love Millie, which is Samantha's gloss with Ofra. It has a different smell. It has that more coconutty smell of some of the Ofra glosses. I find this a little bit harder to wear because it's so brightly white. So I haven't really been reaching for it to like slather on the way that I have been some of my more sheer glosses but it does look really good on camera. It looks really good in videos. And then this one, the um, this is the M Cosmetics True Gloss and Caramel Glaze. I actually, I'm gonna put it with the rest of the M Cosmetics True Glosses in the other tier. So the rest are, are lipsticks. I actually, I love the color of this gloss, this um, liquid lipstick. Lip, lip, lip. I love the color of this liquid lipstick that Samantha did with Ofra. And every time I wear it, I love the way it looks. It's like both natural and edgy. So I'm going to bump that one. Actually, I'm actually going to put that. I feel more like wearing it than I do pretty much any of those other glosses. And I kind of feel more like wearing this Becca Ultimate Lip Love then I do feel like wearing the glosses. It's in the shade Dune. Yeah, I'm gonna put it above, after that lipstick, but above the other glosses. I really love these Finding Ferdinand lipsticks that I made, Baby Bella, Grungy Twiggy, and Sooty Peony. I, I made a whole video. If you just search on my channel for Finding Ferdinand, you can see these like swatched and applied and hear me talking about my decision-making process for making all these colors. They're great colors. I mean, this one, Grungy Twiggy is kind of wild. It's a mix in. They are great for me. I like the formulas. I really like wearing them, but I think that because they're like all in this sort of blank white packaging, 
I sort of think of them as one thing, like I would mix them all together. I, I find myself reaching for them a lot to complete makeup looks for YouTube when I'm trying to like have a really good balance between my eye look and my lip look, but they haven't been making me want to wear them that much lately. I think that they're in this tier, but I think that they're like at the bottom. I've kind of been more wanting to reach for ones like this that have like this sort of bright luxury ostentatious packaging. This is another ZC lipstick. It's the Picasso one in the Demoiselles d'Avignon packaging. Actually, I'm gonna put that next, but I have been kind of thinking about this. This is Mandarin Bolero from Givenchy, a classic. As we move into summer, it makes me wanna wear it more. So yeah, I think that that's the order for those. These are just the rest of the Emma Cosmetics Infinite Lip Clouds in colors that I really love, um, but I think that they're just getting a little bit lost in the mix lately. I haven't been thinking that much about them. This is, was one of my all-time favorites for a long time. It's Bobbi Brown Bear. For some reason, I've been not wanting to wear it as much lately. It's a great basic lip product. I think it's like, it's got enough color that when I feel like something super easy, I've been leaning towards glosses, like things that don't have as much color as this instead of this. But then when I do want to wear a lipstick, I tend to go for something more opaque rather than this. I think that it's been getting left behind because it's such an in-between product. But you know, it doesn't mean that I don't think it should be that way because the fact that it's such an in-between product was what made it work so well for me for so long. I think that the in-between nature of it makes it look makes it work less well for these quarantine times. So that's why I haven't been wanting to wear it as much. So that's the order of the third, the third group. I think, let's see what's left. This is what's left. These are the products that didn't get picked for any of the top three tiers. Many of them are lip liners and I really love lip liners. It's just that they didn't really jump out at me. Like none of them, I guess, even though sometimes I go through long periods during which I'm only wearing lip liner, like I'll often wear lip liners all over my lips just as lip products, even though that does happen to me and I do love these products for that reason. I guess these days I'm not really in that mode. So the lip liners weren't like looking the most appealing to me, except for M Cosmetics Mink, which I really love and jumped out at me and was in the first tier. But all of these are great lip liners. Like I, I plan to wear all of them to continue to wear all of them, uh, but I'm gonna put them to the side for now. I just feel like it's almost like they're one thing. It's like its whole own category. I don't, I think it's gonna be too hard to like rank and intersperse it with these guys because for me, it's kind of just like, it's not a lip liner kind of month right now. But I think that I can rank the rest of these. Oh gosh, this might end up being a declutter at the end of it. But first I'm gonna rank them starting with the ones that I feel the most like wearing. Like if this was all I had, if these products were all I had, what would I reach for first? Okay, so these are the ones that, down here, down here at the bottom, the ones that I do really like, like I like these lip products. I'm reminded, even though they're here at the bottom, as I as I consider each one and touch each one, I'm reminded of like why I love it and why I have it. Uh, Maybelline Raw Chocolate down here, I'm surprised that it's here at the end. I've considered bumping it up, but even though it's one of my all time favorite lipsticks, I just don't really feel that much like wearing it right now. Like I feel more like wearing Gone Grage or the Revlon ones or something. So it's not here at the bottom because it's like, if I were to rank my lipsticks, like my top 10 of all time, I would probably actually include this one, but that's not the ranking I'm doing today. I'm doing the ranking of what I feel the most like wearing. And right now I just, I wore raw chocolate so much for so long. I just don't feel as much like wearing it right now. So that's why it's here at the bottom, but it is at the very beginning of the line of this last row. I really like the lip gloss in this Lancome duo thing. And I actually also really like this super bright orange lipstick. 
I've had this for quite a while and I think it's just, you know, it's a little messy. It hasn't been making me want to reach for it, but I do really, really love it. It's, it's fun to like, remember that it's here. I think I might actually end up reaching for the gloss in the coming weeks now that I've thought about it, but just in terms of like instinctively ranking these, it's here at the beginning of the last row. I like this Illamasqua lipstick a lot. Actually, this is the Illamasqua Sheer Veil Lipstick in the shade Obsess. I like it a lot, but it's so similar to the L'Oreal Color Reshine. Mm, actually, it's got a little bit more warmth to the brown or like no not more warmth it's like got more green in it it's like grungier and greener and it's also a little bit less slippy i'm actually going to put it right next to the l'oreal color reshine in the second tier because now swatching them next to each other i realize that i feel like wearing the illamasqua one just as much as i do the l'oreal one this is a great lip color this is the bobby brown crushed in the shade babe and it's very lipsticky on me. It's It almost reads as a red, even though it's kind of a pink. So I'm going to go ahead and put that one next. It's a, it's a great lip product. I think I just haven't felt like wearing it as much lately because it's like so small and dinky and I have other things. This is really compelling me, Pussy Control by NARS. It's a hard color for me to pull off, you know? It's like lavender, but I still do kind of feel like wearing it. Yeah, I'm having a harder time ranking as we get down here to the bottom. These are all really quite different. You know what I mean? Like Maybelline Beige Babe is just like a really creamy, super pale matte, a great lipstick and a great mix in for me. Elf Golden Pear is a really nice, glossy, nourishing formula. And, you know, I like it. This one is another classic for me, NARS Scap. Amazing, super bright pink. Like all of these, I'll, I'll just do the rest of them. The Glossier Balm.com is just, you know, a salve for the lips. It's not very exciting, but I do reach for it a lot. These are 2K Beauty bright red, great kind of velvety formulas, 2K K Beauty lippies. This is another one of those NARS Velvet Matte Lip Pencils, and it's in Famous Red, one of my all-time favorites. And this is Ofra Emerald City, which is just a really incredible duochrome liquid lipstick. So they're all really, really different, these. You know, it's not like the same type of product has ended up at the bottom. And these are all products that I know I'll wear again and that I want to keep, all of these. They're just ones that for one reason or another aren't making me want to wear them right now. And it's hard when I get down to these like last 10 to put one above the other because I, I feel sort of equally disinterested in reaching for these right now, which is to say that part of me does want to reach for any one of these right now. I'm not totally disinterested in them, but compared to everything else that I feel more compelled to wear, I'm equally disinterested in all of these. So this isn't necessarily a ranking here at the bottom. Like I think that I would probably wear NARS Scat before I'd wear Beige Babe, you know what I mean? But it's just gotten very arbitrary here at the end. So we're going to say that this is the final tier. And these, scandalously, I'm sorry, my dears, but you are up for elimination. Okay, so here's what's happening. I know some of you out there are probably clutching your pearls. I recently talked in my video about uh, my unpopular makeup opinions, about the fact that I don't really like the Charlotte Tilbury Matte Revolution formula. And in that video, I said that it made me realize that I might actually be on the verge of decluttering the three lipsticks that I have in the formula. This, it's Birkin Brown. This one is Bond Girl. Oof, it's hard to think of letting that go. And this one is Legendary Queen. Oh, they're so pretty. They, they do look so pretty here in every way. It's tough. But look, I've got probably over a hundred lip products here. I just don't feel like wearing these and I never do. Like this is the fact, I never do. And I never have because I don't like the formula. And they're in such good shape. So I think that I'm gonna go ahead and give them away. I think that I can do it today, especially with the perspective of having done this whole thing. This is the e.l.f. Ride or Die Lip Balm in Tough Cookie, which I really liked when I first got it. But since then, I've realized that it it's got a little bit too much pigment for me to wear it like in a super natural way. So I always feel like reaching for this when I want a no, a no product lip look, like something really nourishing that doesn't look like much. And then I always end up looking like 
I've put something a little bit pigmented on my lips and it always feels a little awkward and I end up then just like buffing it off or dabbing it off and then it doesn't feel like it's providing me much nourishment. So this has just never actually become something that's elegant and easy for me to wear. I also, I would rather apply something with a paddle than with my fingers. So because I have this, you know, top tier of beautiful nourishing glosses and other products, and then this has ended up at the very bottom, I think I'm actually not going to keep it. This is, uh, I think I either coveted this for a really long time and then got it as a gift or bought it myself. I think I might even have bought it myself. It's Bobbi Brown Telluride. I love this formula, the crushed lip color, but I just don't end up wearing this that much because it's hard. It's a little bit vampy on me. And because it's like a semi sheer nourishing balmy thing, it's hard for me to get it to apply evenly to my lips. It, I have the same problem with this as I have with Birkin Brown from Charlotte Tilbury. They actually end up looking kind of the same. They're almost dupes for each other. I thought for a long time that I really wanted my lips to look like this, that I really wanted this and I wanted Birkin Brown. And then I got them in my collection and I never wear either of them because it's just hard for me to get something that looks natural and seamless. I'm always fussing with it. I think it's just the fact that my skin is so pale. It's something about my coloring that makes it harder for me to wear these two products. I don't think I'll miss it. So I'm gonna let it go. This is Tom Ford Wild Ginger, an iconic product. One of the only things here that I've owned since before my no buy year. It was a birthday gift for my parents. It's my favorite lipstick that I've ever owned. And I just haven't been wanting to wear it recently simply because it is so old. I don't know if it's gone off. I actually don't think it's gone off. It doesn't have a bad smell. I just, I have other lip products. I'm not gonna declutter it though. I'm realizing now holding it in my hands. It's here at the bottom because I, do, I don't know if I'm going to wear it again. Like I have other lip products that provide a similar effect that I feel more like wearing because this is so old. And, you know, it does now that I know more about my preferences for lip products, I know that one of the things that's hard for me about this is that it's really quite glossy. So it's hard for me to get a slightly overlined lip look with this because the, the edge of my lip shines, reflects light, and makes it look a little bit messy. As much as I've coveted this and as precious as it has always been to me, I think that in terms of the formula, it's not the easiest bright red for me to wear. Like I think it's a little bit easier for me to wear NARS Famous Red, for example, than it is for me to wear this because it's a little bit more matte. It's probably even easier for me to wear these K-Beauty products. And I also think that having the chance to try out a bunch of lip products has allowed me to detach a little bit from the allure of luxury. So even though this is like the most expensive lip product I've ever had, the fanciest, the, the most designer, I would be more inclined to reach for a drugstore lipstick that provides a similar effect that's in a more ideal formula. The part of me that always used to think that this was just going to be always unequivocally better because it's Tom Ford and because it's expensive, that part of me has kind of been taught a lesson by the array of products that I've had the chance to try over these past four years on YouTube. So for all of those reasons, it's ended up here at the bottom, the thing that I feel the least like wearing right now. Um, but for sentimental reasons, which is something that I almost never do, but I'm doing it today, for sentimental reasons, I'm going to hang on to this one. Oh gosh, I forgot to rank these because I was using them to hold the other lipsticks still so that they wouldn't roll away. So these are two ZC lip products. I love them because of the designs. The bullets are really pretty. The packaging is really pretty. Um, this one, the pink one, I actually don't really love wearing it because it's got a little bit of gold glitter in it, like a little bit of sparkle. I, I'm actually going to put it at the very bottom. I really don't feel like wearing this. I might, you know what, actually, I'm going to give this away. I love the way that, that it looks. I mean, it's so pretty, but I never feel like wearing it because I don't really like the way that it looks on the lips. I'm going to give that one away. This one though, I really love. This is the color 309. I really, really love this formula and this color. I would say that this kind of goes maybe at the, the front of this last row. Yeah, that's where it goes. Ah, 
I'm not going to be able to get everything in frame. It's so unsatisfying. I have to decide where Maybelline Gone Grage is going to go. Actually, I think, <laughs> I think I'm going to put it first. I think I'm going to keep it first. In doing this and getting everything out and like looking at everything, it's the thing, it's the one thing that when I swatched it, I was like, I'm going to wear that tomorrow. Like I'm going to wear it as soon as possible. I'm going to wear it as soon as I film. The next time I film, I'm going to be wearing this. I feel like wearing it right away. So I'm actually going to put it first ahead of all of these lip glosses. Maybe if we do like a diagonal thing. Yeah, you can kind of get a sense. I know not everything is completely in frame, but you can at least kind of get a sense. You can sort of see what we're dealing with. And I'm going to take this liner out actually on the same principle. Okay, so I have 63 products. I was definitely vastly overestimating when I said that I had more than 100 here. <laughs> uh, uh, it feels like more than 100, but it's just 63. And I am decluttering these seven today. No, these six. I'm decluttering these six today. And it's difficult. It's difficult to rank 60 things in the order of how much you feel like wearing them. But you know, the top 10 or 20 make a lot of sense to me. We're, we're starting with this like classic all time favorite grungy lipstick that I just can't wait to wear. And I'm excited that I'm inspired to do that. And then right after that, we have all of these like sheer, glossy, easy to wear, natural, nourishing things. And then we get into some of the more interesting colors and formulas that I have. And then the second half is just like other interesting colors and formulas that I have, but that just don't feel as exciting to me right now. Um, but that I do know that I will be excited about again in the future. And that is it. I hope that this was fun to watch. I know it was just like a lot of moving stuff around, a lot of talking about stuff and only a little bit of swatching, but I, it's more about just like sitting back, relaxing, hanging out together, and, you know, thinking a little bit about these ideas of desire and the way that our tastes change and what we want to wear, what we already own that we want to wear tends to change. I think that it is good to revisit one's own collection in this way from time to time and just refresh. You know what I mean? Like dig back in, shop your stash, dig back into what you already own and get that like reignited love for something old that will only come around to you if you actually look, if you look, you know what I mean? Like get out what you own and look at it and think about it and feel that excitement. That can be a particularly good strategy if you're really tempted to go shopping. I think that um, you know, doing this has made me definitely not want to buy more lip products right now. Like any desire that I had to buy new lip products has just been completely squashed by doing this. And I also feel the same level of excitement about rediscovering this and re-remembering that I want to wear it. I feel the same level of excitement about that as I would about something brand new. I didn't really used to be a gloss wearer. I didn't really have any lip glosses. I think I maybe had one or two when I started my YouTube channel and I didn't wear them very often. I thought that they were goopy. I didn't like layering them. I just didn't really feel the need to have glosses and to wear them. And recently my tune has changed dramatically. And these days I prefer a gloss in almost every case. But that means that I have this kind of to me, robust collection of glosses. I mean, this little thing is, is full of them, but I don't have as many glosses as someone who has like loved them forever and been collecting them forever. And I definitely don't have as many glosses as I have lipsticks. Oh my gosh, this is really fun. I think that I might not have realized how much I've actually come to love lip gloss until I saw this beautiful array laid out before me. I looked at it and I got a thrill down in the depths of my very soul. I think I might really love lip gloss at this moment in time. There is one missing though. I thought that these were all my lip glosses and then I realized when I was unpacking them from the little velvet case that there's one missing. It's the Aaron's Faces gloss in Early Girl. I think, no, Early Glow. 
I think that the color is called Early Glow. It's too bad because I think that might actually be my favorite gloss. I will link it at the top of the description box and maybe I'll put a picture of it in right now so you can see. So basically I'm gonna be ranking all of my glosses underneath that one, which is my favorite because it's nourishing, it smells and tastes like a strawberry smoothie, it's not sticky, but it really lights up the lips. Like they really, really sparkle and glow and it's semi-sheer, it's just perfect in absolutely every way. It also has very clean ingredients, et cetera, et cetera. And after that, there are all of these. I tend to take it with me when I leave the house and I think that it's in some sort of pocket or bag somewhere. And I looked through my bags, but I couldn't find it. There are a lot of great glosses here though. Again, I try not to keep something unless I really do love it. So I love all of these, pretty much all of them. I love each of them, pretty much each of them. Hmm. Do I not love every one of them? Maybe this will end up being a declutter, but what I'm trying to say is that I have feelings and mostly fond feelings about every single one of these glosses. Let's get down to the ranking. Okay, I'm just gonna do it. I'm just going to go on instinct and I'm going to rank them. The last time I ranked lippies, I did it in order of how much I felt like wearing them at that very moment. And I felt like that was a really good strategy. So that is what I'm going to do now. I'm going to rank these in order of how much I feel like wearing them, starting with the thing that I feel the most like wearing today. Okay, I think I think that this is it. Ranking is hard. I mean, as with every ranking, it's, you know, it's I feel like it's subjective even compared to like me on a different day. This is just kind of how I'm feeling today. And I was definitely noticing as I was doing this that the newness of a couple of these glosses, this one, this one, and this one, and this one, their newness kind of had bearing on where they ended up in the ranking. Like some of them I feel might have placed a little bit higher because they're new and I'm feeling kind of jazzed about them. So taking all that into account and realizing that the ranking is kind of just a springboard for reviews, let's proceed and let's go from bottom to top. I think that that's what I want to do. Let's go from bottom to top. Here at the bottom is the Maybelline Lifter Gloss and it's in the shade Crystal. I talked about this recently in a video about makeup that I regret buying. It's not at the bottom because of the formula. I'm really impressed by the formula. It's very, mm, it's, it's almost like jelly-like and very slippy and it has very beautiful presence on the lips. It feels like it adds a nice plump slick layer to the lips. I am gonna swatch even though it's kind of tough with glosses. Well, you can you can see what's going on with that. You can see how thick and it's like a sheer cream. It's like a sheer jelly-like cream. It definitely has body. You can see it's holding its shape. It's not drippy at all. It's not slidey. It's almost like a whipped set jelly. I think that if the formula were a little bit different and it were like more addictive to me, like if it were asserting itself more, maybe it wouldn't be here at the very bottom. I do like the vanilla smell. I really actually don't think it's the formula. I think the formula is really nice and I really love the packaging. I think for me with this one, it's just the color. This is a color that I really love. That's why I got this one. I love a lip this color. I love a lip product this color, but there's something about the combination of the jelly-like sheerness, like the quality of the formula on the lips with this color that just makes it hard for me to get it to look right. And I never feel like I can slather this on all over my face and then just look great and feel great. I always feel like I'm fussing with it, like I'm not quite happy with the way that it's sitting. I feel like when I went to review this formula, I got the wrong color. I think that I would probably like a different color of this gloss way better. And after this time that I've had with it, I've finally come to admit that I don't really love it. I never use it. I'm actually gonna go ahead and declutter this today because I feel like when I do a ranking, I don't know, the ones that end up at the very, very bottom are always kind of on the chopping block. So this one was on the chopping block, block because it was definitely the bottom and it's been chopped. This is the next to the bottom, the M Cosmetics True Gloss in the shade Moroccan Sunset. 
And gosh, I'll be hard pressed to chop any of these M Cosmetics True Glosses because they're so pretty. I love the packaging. I really love M Cosmetics. I mean, I just have a soft spot in my heart. No, I'm mixing my metaphors. I have a soft spot for M Cosmetics and I have a special place in my heart for M Cosmetics. I don't want to part with this, but it's not a gloss. It's a lipstick. It is a lipstick. And that reminds me to say that these, I didn't include balms in here. Like these are all just things that are marketed as lip glosses. Like that was my criteria for this video. I'm ranking things that are marketed as lip glosses. This is marketed as a lip gloss, but it's so pigmented. It's more pigmented than things that are marketed as lipsticks. Like I have some lipsticks that are more sheer than this. Like the Bobbi Brown crushed lip color isn't as opaque and pigmented as this. The glossy vanillic lips aren't as opaque and pigmented as this. Even the glossy ultra lips aren't as pigmented as this. So as far as I'm concerned, this is a lipstick and that's why they're they're here at the bottom. I think that because they, they're called glosses, but they are lipsticks to me. They kind of end up not being worn as much because they get overlooked when I'm looking for a gloss because this isn't what I want from a gloss. And they get overlooked when I'm looking for a lipstick because they're called glosses. I don't think I'm going to declutter them. I have these three and I really love all of the colors, the undertones and tones in the colors that they create. I just think they're perfect. They're stunning. They look like Linda Evangelista. This one is Faded Clementine. It's the best color ever. So I'm definitely not going to declutter that. And then this is the one that I like the most of the three of the True Glosses Caramel Glaze. In fact, I put something else below it in the ranking because I like it so much. When I do reach for a True Gloss, I tend to reach for this one. It seems too like it's a little bit sheerer than the other two, maybe a bit easier to wear. In any case, I have mixed feelings about these True Glosses but my feelings aren't mixed enough to cause me to declutter them. That's just why they're here at the bottom of the ranking. Above Faded Clementine and Moroccan Sunset and below Caramel Glaze is the Persona Gloss in the shade Honey. It's at the bottom for the same reason that the Maybelline Gloss is at the bottom. Or to be more specific, it's the combination of the brown color with the opacity of the gloss. I just find that with these gooey, shiny glosses when they're only semi sheer rather than being quite sheer and they're brown. I want them. I want to want them. And then I find that I can't get it to be quite right on my lips. I'm so pale and I love to slather a gloss on and really overline with it. And with this, it ends up looking messy the same way that this ends up looking messy. So I'm actually going to go ahead and let this one go today as well. I haven't worn it possibly in over a year. I love the Persona Gloss. You'll notice that my other color of Persona Gloss is actually first in the ranking or second if you include the missing one there in spaces. I'll talk about why that is when I get there. So I'm not besmirching the Persona Gloss here. I think it's one of the best gloss formulas on the market. It's just that this shade Honey isn't the shade for me. Next up, we have the Fenty Gloss in the shade Fussy. I really love this gloss balm. I have actually used up an entire tube of it in the shade Fenty glow the original one and I really like this soft pink and fussy it's a lovely juicy beefy delicious nourishing gloss it's just towards the bottom here because I think that there's like a, the novelty factor that's worn way off for me because I've panned an entire tube of this if this were my first tube it might have sh shown up like higher in the ranking it's just I feel like I've had this gloss forever and I've used it a hundred times and there's just kind of a natural falling off of the passion with a thing like that. It's not fallen off so much that I'm going to declutter it. I still do reach for it quite a bit. And I think that remembering that it's a great gloss and remembering that I have it in my collection because of doing this ranking video, reminding myself of how much I do love gloss might cause me to wear it more in the coming days. Sometimes that happens. I care for it enough that I feel like I won't be surprised if that happens. But just on this day, assessing these glosses as they are, I don't feel as excited about it as I do about all of the ones that ranked above it. This gloss is also one that I've had for a while and loved for kind of a long time. It's the Revlon Super Lustrous Gloss, and this is in the shade Indulge In It. This is a very, very beautiful gloss formula. This is, I think, my favorite. Well, no, probably the at this point, the Flower Beauty is my favorite drugstore gloss formula, but my other 
color in the Revlon Super Lustrous ranked above it. So maybe I can still say that this Revlon Super Lustrous is my favorite gloss at the drugstore. And see how it's starting to kind of sheer out as it sits. It's like settling on my skin. The swatch is starting to just, I don't know, it's like, it's like an oil slick. This gloss feels almost like they could have marketed as a lip oil. And you see how it's really starting to even out and become one with my skin, sort of, even though it's kind of a thick swatch. And these other formulas aren't doing that. Like the true glosses are, they're still holding their shape. They have body. The one from Maybelline is also still kind of like jelly-like and whipped on my arm. I guess the Fenty one, as we move closer to this, they're doing a little better job of like melting into my skin. But I feel like of all of them, this one, the one that I just swatched, has the most elegant presence here on my arm. And you can see that even though it's kind of a deep color, you can see my skin color through it. It's starting to sheer out a little bit. That's why I find this wearable when I struggle to wear like this color and this color. There's just something about the way that it blends into the color of my lips. The reason that it ranked lower and way lower than its its partner, like the, the other gloss that I have in the same formula, is because of the dark color. I just don't wear it as much and it reach for it as much because of it. But when I do, I really love how it looks. It kind of reminds me of a gloss version of Charlotte Tilbury's Bond Girl, and I'm definitely here for that. So it's a, it's a beloved one to me. It's just not towards the top right now today. Sadly, this Lisa Eldridge gloss is ranking kind of low today. I just got this for a review. It's in the shade Go Lightly. It ended up being much pinker than I expected it to be, and the formula, it's nice, but as I've worn it, over the days since I reviewed it first on camera, I've just realized it is not distinguishing itself to me. Like there's the ones that I really love, the glosses that I am passionately longing to slather all over my face all the time. It's because of the formula. It's because the formula is doing something for me kind of on an emotional and tactile level. And I just don't feel that way about this. It's it's the tiny, tiny details, like the doe foot is a little bit hard and the formula is a little bit thick and the color is a little bit bright. Everything is just a little bit to the left or to the right of kind of like how I would wish for it to be. And you can also see that it does have that, that stiffness, that body, that kind of like jelly-like hold of its swatched shape that these thicker formulas at the bottom have. And the ones that I tend to really love don't have that. These ones, these three, I prefer the formulas of. And so, I don't know, it's it's above these because of the novelty factor, because it's new. I actually wore it yesterday. You know what I mean? I'm like reaching for it these days because I'm still testing it out, but it hasn't really distinguished itself enough to leap above any of these ones in the ranking. Next up, we have a gloss formula that I like quite a lot, but that I don't love. I expected to love it because of what everyone said and I didn't end up loving it. And it's in a color that I, at first I thought I was not going to get along with at all, but that I have actually ended up liking. The formula and the color of this have kind of grown on me, but not enough for this one to be any higher in the ranking that it is. So this is the Tower 28 milky jelly gloss and it's in the shade oat. This is like a dream color for me for a lip product, an absolute dream. But because of the pigment that it has, it's like a little bit more more opaque, a little bit more pigmented than I was hoping it would be. It isn't as good for slathering all over, for overlining as I was hoping that it would be. With this, I've learned that if I just apply a little bit, almost like a balm and rub it into my lip skin. It can look really lovely that way. I enjoy wearing it that way and it does feel nourishing and nice. I just don't end up reaching for it as much because I love to slather a gloss on. I love to have my lips literally be like dripping in gloss. And if I put this on to the point where my lips are dripping in it, it looks funny because the opacity and the milkiness kind of battle with my natural lip color. It doesn't look quite right when it's overlined. It's something that I have to apply more subtly than I prefer to apply a gloss. But I do really like the, f the formula. As you can see, its partner, it, its little friend that's the same formula but a different color, is very, very high in the ranking. So it's really the combination of the formula with the other factors like the color that are placing this where it's placed, which is about halfway up the list. And it's ranking below the CBD Chill Out Lip Glaze from Flower Beauty. And I must say, I feel like this is the, the wheat separated from the chaff right here. There comes a moment in every ranked list of 
lip products where you cross over from the things that were in the bottom of the list, like the ones that I consider to be the bottoms and the ones that are the tippity tops. So like these are the bottoms for the week. These are the ones that I'm like, oh yeah, wah, wah, wah. Like I like them enough to keep them. I am going to con continue to use them. But this is the line, like everything below this line is not really my favorite and everything above this line, like these are my favorites. Like these are my one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. If you include the Aaron's faces, these are my eight favorite lip glosses. So I feel like this is the biggest leap we've had so far. Like the way I feel about this and the way I feel about this are like very, very, very different different. So that's why I've moved everything else off screen because I feel like now we're just talking about my eight favorite lip glosses. And because these are my eight favorites, it becomes a little bit more difficult to rank them. I feel like on any given day, any one of these eight could be at the top and be the one that I feel like wearing. This is just the order in which I feel like wearing them today, starting with the one I feel the most like wearing. The Flower Beauty Chill Out Lip Glaze, it might actually be my favorite lip gloss formula like ever. I love how slick it is. Everyone says it's a dupe for the Tower 28 ones, but I don't think that it is. It has more of a, of a slippy quality to it. It has more of just this very, very nourishing, almost balmy, but beefy quality to it. It's jelly-like, but without having that annoying like thickness. That's the best way that I can explain it. The reason that it's at the bottom is because of the color and seeing how similar it is to Go Lightly from Lisa Eldridge makes me think that I actually might not end up keeping Go Lightly. I might give this Lisa Eldridge lip gloss away. I prefer this formula and the color is so similar. Right above that in the ranking for today is this Hourglass Gloss. This is in the shade Cosmic. Unreal? It says Cosmic Unreal. Why does it say Cosmic Unreal? Is it the Hourglass Unreal Lip Gloss in the shade Cosmic? Or is it in the shade Cosmic Unreal? Anyway, this is something that I'm currently testing for review and I feel very attracted to it because it's so luxurious and fancy and new. I really like that it's sheer, even though it's got a pink undertone, it's much more sheer than these two super pinky ones. And it's very, very glittery. Mmm. Actually, swatching it makes me feel like it should have been higher in the ranking. I kind of, <laughs> swatching it makes me want to wear it today. Like, I think that I feel more excited about wearing this right now than any of the others. I'm putting it at the top since I swatched it. It leapt to the top. I think that I've been conceiving of it. I've had it for about a week. I've been testing it. I think that I've been conceiving of it as being very pink, and so I haven't been feeling like wearing it, but seeing it compared to my other pinky glosses that I wear all the time, this one that I wear all the time, and this one that I have been wearing a lot because I've been testing it, makes me realize that it's actually a more natural colored undertone for me, and I'm excited. I'm more excited than I was. I don't really like the smell though. It has this kind of minty, it's like a spearminty smell and that's not something that I like in a gloss. It reminds me of like a, a dental hygiene product and I'm, I'm not about that, but everything else about it, I love. This is tough. We're getting into like my all time favorite glosses. This one is really interesting too. It's in the shade Blissed Out and you would think that I wouldn't like it because of how I've been besmirching pink. I'm, I'm over here talking about how I don't like pink glosses, but it shears out so beautifully, settles into the lips so beautifully. This is that formula from the drugstore that I said I feel like could be marketed as a lip oil. The finish is just absolutely stunning. Sometimes I've been with friends and I've like pulled this out of my purse and applied it and then literally everyone in sight is like, what is that? What is that? It looks so good on your lips. There's just something about this gloss formula and how it sits on the lips. And this, even though it's pink, it looks really, really natural on me. It ends up just lighting up my lips, making them glowy. It's much, much easier to wear than it looks in the tube like it would be. And I find it much easier to wear than this kind of like brighter watermelon pink. It's more of a soft, sheer coral. And I think that the only reason that it ended up below these three is that it has some pink pigment to it. And these days I really feel like wearing sheer and neutral glosses. And that's what the next three are. This is very new to me. It's something from e.l.f. that I'm testing. It's just called the e.l.f. Lip Lacquer. And you can see that of all of these, this very, very, very pale, 
champagne-y color is a true nude on me. Like this is the color of my skin and I really like that because my lips are kind of pigmented. So layering this over tones down the natural color of my lips with this reflective kind of silky champagne jelly and it gives my lips a lighter color in addition to making them really shiny and I really like that look. So I've been super impressed by this. It's kind of similar to the Maybelline, this one that I said I didn't like because of the dark color. It's kind of similar to it in that it's got this like thick jelly-like quality and it probably would hold its shape in the same way if I had given it that super thick swatch. Yeah, it's got that almost goopy quality, but in a good way. It's really easy to apply and super easy to wear and it's pretty long lasting. It's just a, a really good gloss, but it's different. It, it's definitely not like an oil leaning gloss or a balm leaning gloss. It's like a jelly leaning gloss. So far, I have been very, very pleased with it. Curiously, this, the Tower 28 one that's next in line, this is called the jelly gloss. Like they, ca they call it the jelly lip gloss, but I don't feel like this is very jelly like. I feel like it's more liquidy. It has a more liquidy aspect. It might go on a little bit jelly-like, but it just completely settles onto the lip skin and, and becomes less like a layer than some of these other glosses. This is also obviously very easy to wear. It's just clear with gold glitter, really sheer. I love how it lights up the lip, lips and I love how shiny it is. And even though I initially didn't like the smell, I've gotten used to it over time. You can see that I've used up a lot of it. I've used up like I think more than half of it. But one really weird thing is going on with this. Look at the wand. The doe foot, which was initially just white or clear. I mean, it was it was just like a, a white doe foot with a clear paddle inside of it, has gone positively green. Something about the gold glitter has like caused the liquid to turn green on the paddle. Has this happened to anyone else? And also if you have the clear gloss, the one that doesn't have glitter in it, has it happened to you? I'm curious to know, I would like to gather more data, like what's going on with the green paddle in this Tower 28 gloss? It's weird, but it hasn't deterred me from using it. I still really feel like wearing it and I still <laughs> think it looks beautiful. Uh, it's just weird. Next in the ranking, this is another one that is pretty new to me. I'm testing it for review. It's the Bare Minerals Gloss Balm. And I said I wasn't going to include any balms in here. And I do indeed have a couple of like balm style products that have a glossy finish. The uh, Glossier Ultra Lip, for example, I didn't include because I feel like that's being billed as a hybrid formula. This is also being billed as a hybrid formula but I really think of it as a lip gloss. And more importantly, it's so shiny and so sheer that it really looks like I'm wearing a lip gloss when I wear it. And it's totally clear. It's in the shade Clarity. I love wearing this. I'm really excited that I'm getting the chance to review it. I love wearing it because it is super shiny. Like it looks incredible on. I don't know how, well, you can kind of see how it's like it's holding its own in terms of shine compared to these glosses, which all have some form of glitter in them. And it doesn't have glitter and it's just totally sheer, but it's just got a very mirrored surface. So I love the fact that it has that quality visually and it has no real color in it, but it's a balm. Like it's nourishing to the lips, or at least they are billing it that way. So I've actually been reaching for it a ton, possibly more than anything else since I got it. And for that reason, it ended up really, really, really high on the list but not as high up as this Persona gloss. And that is simply because I love the effect of this and I've been wearing it a lot lately. I was recently re-reminded of how special it is and I've just been putting it on almost every day and I've been wearing it in a lot of videos too. It has a beautiful, rich vanilla cake smell. The formula is perfectly balanced. It's like not too thin, not too thick, not too oily, not too jelly-like. Melts into the skin, lasts for a long time. And there's just something about the way that this coral red color lights up the lips. It looks natural. It doesn't compete even with strong eye looks or strong cheek looks, but it has color. It distinguishes. It's like it defines the lips with color, but without being so pigmented that it's awkward or difficult. I just feel like everything that these ones, everything that ended up these darker and more colorful glosses in the bottom, everything that ended them up in the bottom doesn't apply to this one. And it's just showing that it's not about the 
color itself. And it's also not about the formula itself. It's about the way that the color and the formula interact. And it's like the way that the color has bearing on the formula or the way that the formula has bearing on the color. This right here is the honey gloss from Persona. It's not as though this looks way less pigmented, although I think that it does. I think it looks like the pigment is a little bit more sheer in this. It's like the pigment isn't gathering as much in the places where the gloss gathers, or it might be the exact undertones of this. And there might be something about them that suit my makeup looks better or like suit the natural color of my lips better. This is just to say that it's the combination of color and formula and the overall look that I get from this that's putting it in the top. I really enjoy wearing it and I really enjoy what it adds to my face when I wear it. I actually think that the hourglass gloss, which is right here, I actually think it's going to end up playing kind of a similar role. The pink is much lighter though. Like this reminds me of like a perfect neutral glossy nail polish. You know what I mean? Like a barely there, just making your nails look more healthy color of nail polish. And I think that it's going to end up now that I've realized how similar it kind of is to this persona one in formula and just in the, the presence of the pigment in it, I think I'm probably going to end up wearing it as often as I've been wearing this one. And the Erin's Faces one is pretty similar to these ones that I've been raving about. I'll try to remember to link a video below in which I am wearing it so that you can see what it looks like on my face. Okay, so that's it. Those are all of my lip glosses ranked. I think what we've learned here is that I like a sheer gloss. To me, lip gloss is awesome because you can slather it all over and use it to overline and to make your lips look plumper and to nourish your lips. It's harder to do that the more opaque a gloss becomes. And for me, because I'm so pale, the deeper the color of the gloss. I clearly do enjoy a colorful gloss or a gloss that lights up the lips. It's just that the pigment has to be sheer enough, has to be light enough like it is for these pinks and this coral down here to work for me in the way that I like to use gloss. This has been incredibly enlightening for me because so far in my you know relatively recent foray into this whole world of lip gloss. It's like I've, I've known that I like some and I don't like others and I know what I like and what I do like, I really like, but I don't think that I had fully and completely articulated to myself that what I like is a sheer gloss and that I love color and I love neutral color for glosses. It's just that it has to be very, very lightly pigmented and that the more pigmented a gloss is, the less likely I am to get along with it. I just hadn't been able to say it in such direct terms. And now that I have done this, like I've swatched these in order from the ones I like the most to the ones I like the least. You'd believe me if I told you that I had just swatched them in order of opacity, right? Like, doesn't this look like I just swatched it in order of opacity? Yeah. So now that I've done this, I have more concrete knowledge about what I like, and that's going to lead me to make much better purchasing decisions in the future. Look at this. What do you think? I'm feeling excited. I would also say I'm feeling a bit apprehensive. I'm going to be decluttering my collection of lip products today. But more than decluttering, I, I'm going to be doing kind of an organizational project today. There's some stuff mixed in here that's not lip products. And as you can see, everything's all mixed together. The lip glosses and the lipsticks and the lip liners. There's just no organization. And, and when my lip product collection gets like this, I tend to stop using my favorite things because I can't find them and I'm not thinking of them. So I need to let go of some dead weight and I also just need to kind of get back on the horse with using and loving my lip products as they deserve. Okay, this is what we're dealing with, a somewhat intimidating pile. I think the first thing I need to do is to take out everything that's not a lip product. And then I am going to go through and isolate one category from everything else so that I can deal with it all category by category. I'm going to start with lipsticks, proper lipsticks.
Okay, I had to zoom out to get everything in frame. And I realized that I said that I was going to be starting with proper lipsticks, but then when I was sorting it out, when I was sorting all of the products out, I realized that I kind of consider anything that has any level of coverage to be a lipstick. It's sort of all in one category for me when it comes to use, practical use, like what I reach for when I'm feeling like I want a certain level of coverage. And the level of coverage, even though there's a variety of coverage here, like the Glossier Vanillic Lips have a pretty light coverage. They, they act like a gloss. The Gucci Lip Wall right here, you know, that's like a sheer, almost balmy level of coverage. Even though there's a variety of levels of coverage here, these are all products that I feel like they're going to add some kind of weight to my lips in terms of balancing out what else is on my face. I just realized something's missing. There, this YSL lipstick was hiding in my blush box. So even though some of these are pretty sheer and some of them are full pigment, some of them are shiny, some of them are matte, I think of all of them as being relatively heavy hitters, especially on my very pale skin, when it comes to adding something to a look. Most of these are gonna be kind of the star of the look if I wear them. That's the way that this category makes sense to me in my head. And so that's why it ended up being such a big category. It's definitely the biggest category of lip product for me. Here's the thing. I didn't say this in the intro, but a huge motivation for me to do this declutter, the main motivation is that I'm really, I'm ready to weed out products that have gotten really old. I feel like we just lost like a year and a half really quickly. And so suddenly products that were feeling like I'd, I'd had them for a long time, but they're still definitely good. Some of those products have gotten almost scarily old. And I know that people have different feelings about how long you should keep a makeup product. Brands tend to say that a lipstick or, you know, a lip product is good for six months to a year, sometimes two years, two and a half years. We, many of us, tend to keep products long past that date if they're still in good shape. So if they don't smell funny, if they're performing well. And that's what I tend to do too. If something still seems like it's in good shape, then I'll keep it. If I still love it and I'm still using it. But I think that there's something in between that goes on, at least for me. Sometimes when a product gets really old, like four or five years old, which is pretty old for, you know, a bullet lipstick, which is essentially a cream product, or something that's in a tube where you dip a dough foot in. That's pretty old for a product like that. When something gets quite old, even if it hasn't gone off, sometimes I just subconsciously start to avoid it because I think on a subconscious level, I'm always trying to make sure that I don't put anything on my skin that might, you know, have bacteria in it. When something gets really, really old and grody, like on a, on a conscious level, I, I don't want to get rid of it because it's a classic lipstick in my collection. I really, really love it. And it doesn't smell bad and the formula seems like it's fine, but it's so old that I just, I just feel like I'm not inclined to use it because on some level I'm a little bit wary of it and you know I have a lot of beautiful lipsticks so the fact that it's really old and the fact that I've got a lot of beautiful lipsticks means that I start subconsciously just like pushing it out of the way and pushing it out of the way even though my conscious mind has never been able to bring my hands to actually declutter it. So I'm on a mission today to seek out those products, products that I may have loved, may still love, but that if I'm honest with myself, I'm really probably never going to use again simply because they're, they're past their prime in a serious way. So to start, I'm going to weed out the products from here that are old, like things I've had since before I started my YouTube channel or things that are from maybe 2019, but I'm mostly talking about 2017 and before. None of this is from 2018 because that was my no buy year. So we're really starting with targeting products that I had before my no buy year, before my YouTube channel. <laughs> I'm sorry to say it, but I think all of them at this point have probably got to go.
Okay, here they are. These are seven lip products that I've owned since before my no buy year. This is actually, this is the one that's hurting me the most, even though Tom Ford Wild Ginger is here. This is a NARS lipstick called Catherine. It's such a beautiful formula. It's such a beautiful kind of watermelon coral color. But I have had it for so long and you can see there's kind of like weird stuff on the bullet. And you know, it's not like I didn't get any use out of it. Like I got a decent amount of use out of it. And you know, I'm looking on the bottom of it, on the, the little label on the bottom. It says 12 months. It says it's good for 12 months. And I've had it for five years. And again, it's not my practice to throw a lipstick out as soon as it reaches the 12 month mark. You know, I definitely wouldn't do that. Clearly I haven't been doing that. But I just feel like we're getting to the point where even though I don't want to admit it, probably its age would give me pause before I actually applied it to my lips. So it's sad, but it's time for it to go. NARS Scap, a classic lipstick in my collection. I absolutely love this. And this I think I've had for, I don't know, something like six years, maybe even seven years. I bought this back when I was in grad school. It does say on the bottom 24 months. So it's, it's apparently got twice as long of a shelf life. Uh, compared to the audacious lipsticks, but still, you know, I've had it for four times longer than you're supposed to keep it. These two Nara's Velvet Lip Pencils are in the shades Pussy Control and Famous Red. I believe I purchased these in 2016. Luckily for me, both of these colors, I mean, for me in this moment, both of these colors, even though they're really special, both of them have something about them that makes me not want to wear them too much. You know, like Pussy Control, it's this sort of lavender color, and it's just not the most flattering thing on me. I, I have loved owning this, but I'm not crying to see it go. And Famous Red pulls a little bit cool toned on me. It can, it can really look like pink. Uh, so neither of these got as much use out of them as they would have if they'd been colors that worked better for me. And so, I, you know, I'm not feeling like it, it's the worst pain in my life to see them go. This actually is from 2018, from my no-buy year. It was a point perk at Sephora, and I, I replaced some skincare or something, and, and it came with my order because I was on a replacements only no-buy. It's the Bobbi Brown Crushed Lip Color in the shade Babe, and my little trial size of this started a, a love affair for me with this product. I really, really like the consistency of it and the finish, the formula, everything. Clearly, I've gotten some good use out of this. I've, I've really loved having it. It came into my collection early in 2018. It was probably January or February. And that means that at the end of this year, it'll be four years old. So given that it's a dinky little mini like this, and given that even though I really love it, it's not as though I'm wearing it, you know, every other day or something, I think it's time has come. This is also from 2018, my no buy year, because it was a birthday gift. My sister gave it to me for my birthday in February of 2018, and it's, you know, one of my all-time favorite lip products. It's sad to see it go. It's M Cosmetics Faded Clementine. The Infinite Lip Cloud Formula. Gosh, the smell really brings back memories of my no buy year because this was one of my most worn products that year and beyond. But especially given that it's a wet product with a doe foot applicator. It's definitely too old to keep using. And it says 12 months on the bottom, which means according to M Cosmetics, this expired in February of 2019. I put this in the group, but I actually, this is French nude. I remember my sister gave me French nude for my birthday that year as well. It was like French nude and faded clementine, but I actually don't think that this is the original French nude because look how much more wear faded clementine has on it. I think that at some point, M Cosmetics sent me a PR package that had French nude in it, and I replaced my old French nude with this one. So I actually think that this one is newer. And decluttering Faded Clementine is making me miss this formula, and I love this color, French nude, so I think I'm actually going to hang on to this. But I have to deal with Tom Ford Wild Ginger. My parents gave this to me for my birthday in 2016, and it doesn't have an expiration on the bottom, but, you know, it's old. It's really old, it's too old, and I haven't worn it in maybe a year because I'm aware that it's too old. 
But I feel a sentimental attachment to this, not only because my parents gave it to me, but because it's so luxurious and it's been kind of like an iconic product on my channel for a long time. Like I, I think of it as representing the appreciation of quality over quantity. I think I want to keep it and not use it, which I I don't do with pretty much anything. But, you know, is it okay for for this to be like my one piece of, of sentimental makeup, like my one thing. I just feel like I'm going to want to have it until I'm old, kind of, you know what I mean? And, and have it just be like, this was my lipstick when I was young, you know? I, I like, I want this to be that one. So I'm going to hang on to it basically as a souvenir, a souvenir from my youth. These four products are from 2019, so my budget year, like right after my no-buy year. These are some of the first lipsticks that I acquired after my no-buy year was over. This one came in PR. This is an iconic Givenchy lipstick called Mandarin Bolero. And you know, they might have sent this to me in early 2020, either that or it was late 2019. This isn't something that I acquired like as soon as my no-buy year was over, that's almost three years old or something. I actually think this might be closer to two years old. And I really love the color and the formula. I'm gonna hang on to this. Maybelline Beige Babe, a wonderful drugstore lipstick. I really love this lipstick. I've worn it a lot. I bought it, I think, in January of 2019, like as soon as my no-buy year was over. So at the end of this year, it'll be three years old. Up close like this, right now, the color looks just insanely amazing to me. Like, I just, I just love it. It's one of the most perfect colors that I've ever had in makeup, but I know that I'm not really wearing it. It's like, I don't think that it is particularly too old for me right now. Like I just, it's not like I wouldn't put it on my lips today or something. I just know that I'm not wearing it a lot. And I feel like what's gonna happen is that with every day that goes by, with every month that goes by, it's gonna become older and older until really quite soon it passes the point where it is a little bit uncomfortably old. And just realistically, I'm, I'm not going to get much, if any, wear out of it between now and when it passes that point. So I feel like uh, I, I feel like I can say goodbye to it. It's been a good run. And if I really miss it, I can replace it. The same exact thing is true of Bobbi Brown Bear. This is something that I bought for myself pretty early in 2019. I don't feel like it's super old, but it is about to be three years old. And again, I haven't been wearing it assiduously and I just don't know how many more times I'm going to wear it before it passes the point of being kind of uncomfortably old. This one hurts because I bought it for myself with my own money and it was expensive. It was like $30. And I don't know, this getting rid of old, old things, it's actually, it's a good exercise. It's reminding me that makeup isn't something that lasts forever. It's not the same as like buying some art that you put on your wall or, or buying like a really, even like a really sturdy pair of shoes or like a handbag or something like that. It's not like that. It's a perishable good. And even though this exact product might not be, you know, rotten to the core today, it's going to get there. And because I have so many beautiful products, it's going to get there before I have a chance to use it, before I have a chance to use it up. It really makes me not want to buy more, more products. All right, I just applied this to my lips to see how I felt about it. And here's how I feel about it. I've always loved that it's, it's got pigment, but it's also kind of balmy. It's nourishing and moisturizing, but it's also a very beautiful color. I've, also, I've always loved that about this product. Right now, to me, with where I'm at with, with makeup, with lipstick, with what I put on my lips and stuff like that, it doesn't feel as nourishing as I remember. It feels more like a lipstick than a balm. And so I feel like if I want something nourishing, nourishing I'm going to be wearing something that's actually much more actively moisturizing. And if I want color, I'm going to be going for something 
like extraordinary, some really exciting color, some of one of these other products that I have here. Gosh, it's weird. I, I feel a little bit like it's premature because I think that if I were just doing a straight declutter where I'm just looking at how much I think I like my stuff, then I wouldn't reach for this necessarily. I wouldn't really feel like it's right to have it on the chopping block again because it was expensive and I bought it with my own money. But looking at it from the perspective of age, how long ago I bought it, and how many more wears I think I realistically might get out of it, looking at it from that perspective, I think it makes a lot of sense to just go ahead and and clear it out and make space, not space for new stuff, but just some breathing room so that I can see what I have. This is a really cool product. It's the uh, L'Oreal Color Riche Shine in the shade Dazzling Doe. And again, you can see I've I've definitely used it. You know, I've messed it around. I really like this sort of like sheer, glossy, cool toned, taupey brown <laughs> color. Um, but I've always found this a little bit difficult to wear because it's kind of sheer and the color is really, really different from a lip color and it's pale. So it can end up, I don't know, it, it provides pretty good coverage, but I always worry a little bit. It's also really shiny and slidey. I worry that it's not totally going to stay put. So I've gotten some good use out of this, but it's definitely like a super wet, glossy product. It's definitely also three years old and it's an easier decision to clear it out and make some space. Because even though I did buy this for myself with my budget, it was a drugstore lipstick. It, it wasn't as expensive as the Bobbi Brown one. Okay, it's a little easier to get everything in frame now because I've let go of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine so far. And the 10th one is the Tom Ford, which I'm keeping, but you know, for emotional reasons. But for all intents and purposes, 10 items have been removed from this, my collection of lipsticks that I own and wear. I don't think any of these is older than like two, two and a half years, even though some of them probably say on them that they expire in 12 months or something. For me, with my comfort level, I feel like all of these are fresh enough to keep using. So now it just remains to go through and see if any of them are, you know, products that I actually don't want to keep. You know, now we've kind of come to the regular declutter part of this process. This is the Glossy Vanillic Lip in the shade Coupe. I actually don't think I ever properly reckoned with this. I think it just kind of sneaked into my, my lipstick collection. I did a whole review of this formula and I really like it. I gave it a positive review. I like the product, but it's really slidey and shiny and a bit messy. I actually kind of like that quality in it for other colors, but if I'm going to wear this incredible bright red, I'm gonna wear it in a more matte formula or one that's a little bit easier to control. So even when I was filming that video, I said I was probably not gonna keep this and that is correct, I'm not gonna keep it. Okay, this is the TikTok lip tint lip, TikTok cashmere, TikTok tint lip cashmere from I'm Meme. This is a, a product that I got from Yes Style. I really like the delivery mechanism. I like this packaging for a lip product. I loved it in the Glossy Vanillic Lip and I like it in this kind of more matte cashmere formula. But uh, I don't like this brown. I was expecting it to be more neutral, maybe almost a little bit rosy, but when I wear it, it looks very orange. So I'm not gonna keep this one, uh, but I am actually gonna go ahead and keep this other one. My Kinda Coral is what it's called. Do I want to keep this Becca lipstick? It's a beautiful formula, very pigmented though, like almost too pigmented for me and it leans really peachy on me rather than being like a neutral nude. I think this can go. Y'all, I just never wear these. I. I love 
them, but I don't. I, I don't know. It's the it's the M Cosmetics True Gloss. I love the way they smell and feel. There's just something I love about them. And I love the colors. I love M Cosmetics colors. But I find this difficult to wear for the same reason that I find Glossy Vanilla Clip and Coupe difficult to wear. It's highly pigmented, but very kind of slidey and shiny. I've kept them because I can't bring myself to declutter them because I love everything about them except for that. I think what I'm gonna do is just keep the one that I love the most, which is Caramel Glaze. Although look at that, I said that I wasn't keeping this because it was too orange on me, not rosy enough, but this is much more orange than this. You know, I think that I might just have to let all of them go. I think I'd like the idea of them, but I don't really like them themselves for me. Oh my gosh, that's a real load off. They've been weighing me down. I really want to love them. I really love M Cosmetics. I love their lip products. I love the colors, but I've just, I've had them for a while and I just, every time I try to wear them, I end up wiping it off because it's like too much. I just can't make it work. I think it's partly user error. I know that that kind of formula works really, really well for a lot of people. It's user user error and user kind of like preference. Okay, everything else can stay. And you know what, y'all? I've been filming for a really long time and I think I'm just gonna end this video here. I, I'm going to declutter my glosses and lip liners together, but in a separate video. So that video will be coming very soon on my channel. It'll be coming right on the heels of this one. So again, if you're not subscribed and you wanna make sure that you see that other video when it goes up, make sure to subscribe. You can even sign up to be notified by ringing the notification bell so that you'll be notified when I post the next video. Before I say goodbye though, let's revisit the decluttered products and let's see what the numbers are. Okay, so I kept 38 lipsticks. I decluttered 15, and then this one, number 16, is going to, like, lipstick heaven. Or, you know, it's going to, like, live on a farm. <laughs> it's going to live a better life, live on a farm where it can run around. But I essentially decluttered 16, and I kept, what did I say, 38? So can we say that's roughly a third? I mean, it's maybe not quite a third, but it's, a, it's significant. I think going in and really trying to weed out the things that are quite old, being willing to part with them, even though I feel like I still love them, but being honest with myself about the fact that they're too old, it's done a, a couple of things for me. One, it's, you know, it's helped me really whittle down my collection of lipsticks, which is going to be great going forward. I'll, I'll be able to see what I have and, and use what I have better. But it also made me sharply aware that these products are all expiring. <laughs> They're expiring even as we speak. And in just six months to a year, some of these ones that I kept are going to be as old as some of these ones that I just decluttered because I felt like they were too old. So it's another very strong bit of motivation to be proud proactive about using these products that I have and love. I just finished filming my lipstick declutter. I thought it was going to be a full collection lip product declutter, but I got to the end of the lipstick part and I was like, this has been a whole video. So I ended that video and now I'm starting a new one. In this video, I'm going to be decluttering my lip glosses and lip liners. Okay, this is not going to be nearly as long and trying of a video as the lipstick one was because I clearly don't have as many glosses as I have lipsticks. And also I'm remembering now that I, I didn't really wear lip gloss very much before 
2020, 1920. Like I, I wasn't much of a gloss girl back in the day. I had like seven or eight really old lipsticks that I was hanging on to because I had loved them, even though they were like six years old. And so there was this long and arduous process of sorting them out from the lipsticks and then this emotional process of letting them go. I don't know if I'm going to really have to do that today, except for with this. Look how ridiculous this is. I really love it. Look, it's like the same color as my, my nails. Okay, here's the thing. This is clearly, it's it's really got to go. I mean, I think that I probably bought this in 2016 and I've clearly gotten very good use out of it. But I'm gonna hang on to this little stub because I, I want to find out whether this exact color has been renamed something else by Givenchy because they renamed all of their lip pencils. They like redid their line of lip pencils. And I think that Number nine is no longer this color, but I think that they might have made this color a different number and given it a different name. So at some point, I need to take this to Sephora and swatch it next to the samples at the Givenchy gondola and find out if I can replace this. I don't know if I'll replace it right away. I just want to find out before I get rid of this. But first, let's find out if anything, any of the lip pencils that I own, let's find out if any of them is close to this color or maybe a dupe for this color. Okay, so this long stripe is obviously the Givenchy. And then on top there, that is the closest dupe. That's Kitten, which is an M Cosmetics lip liner. And then underneath Kitten, we have the NYX uh, Lip Suede Matte Lip Liner in the shade London. Underneath that is LA Girl Cafe. And I'm missing an LA Girl lip liner that I have. I don't know where it is. I have it somewhere. It's called Sugar and Spice. And Sugar and Spice is more pink than cafe. So it actually might be a kind of a dupe as well. Underneath cafe, there is this lip liner from Lancome, which is called natural mauve. I almost called it marvelous mauve, but it's called natural mauve. Underneath natural mauve is the khaki lip liner from Thrive Cosmetics. Underneath that, the sort of peachy one is a lip liner from Becca called Pouty. Underneath that is Mink, which is from M Cosmetics. I'm missing, I'm missing one. What's going on? Okay, y'all, there's a lot going on. First, I think I'm, first of all, the baby is back from baby school. And so if you hear her chirping away, then that's what that is. <laughs> I usually, these days I'm usually able to film while she's not here, but um, alas, this is not one of those days. And secondly, I think that I might have swatched one twice. It's the only thing that I can figure out. It's the only thing that makes sense. Like, it's the only thing that I think might have happened. Because I, am I not counting right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I mean, we'll find out, right? When I review the footage, we'll find out. But for now, I think that that is, must, that is what must have happened. But I'm also missing a couple of lip liners. I'm missing Sugar and Spice. I'm missing my Juvia's Place lip liner. I don't know where it is right now. However, what I will say for us today is that we have triumphantly discovered that Kitten is pretty close to the color of this Givenchy lip liner. It's not quite as rich. And the thing about the Givenchy is that I really love the formula. It's not just the color, it's the formula. I'll probably replace it someday. All of the rest of these colors are either leaning kind of, you know, orangey peachy or leaning very, very brown, which I do love, but it's always nice to have this, you know, more, it's, it really, really is like my lips, but just slightly more pigmented. That's what that color is. And that's why I love it so much. But I don't think any of these is disappointing enough to give away, to declutter right now. And it's not as though my collection of lip liners is like busting at the seams. Let's look at these Charlotte Tilbury ones. Yeah, those are super pretty and they're my only reds. They're my only like red leaning lip liners. They're pretty useful. Yeah, I think I'm going to keep them. I think I'm going to keep these guys. My lip liners, they're, they're all right. 
Except for this one. It's going to lip liner heaven. Okay, glosses. You know, I feel, I feel like I have more glosses than this. And there might be one or two missing, but I, I feel like I've just acquired a lot of lip glosses lately. I feel like I wear lip gloss a lot. And then when I put them all together like this, I mean, it's not as though this is, you know, a minuscule collection of glosses or something. It's just when I put them all together like this, especially compared to my lipsticks, I remember that I only got into gloss kind of recently. <laughs> you know, I remember that it's like, it's not really been my, my jam for very long. And so this is already like a pretty edited collection. And right off the bat, nothing is jumping out at me. Actually, yes, this is. This has made it through a couple of declutters. It's pretty old. I think it's from 2019. I do really love the gloss on the end of here, but the reality is that it's old. It's grody. It was limited edition. You can't really get it anymore. And I just don't wear it that often because I don't think of it because I have all of these other wonderful glosses. And even though it's great, it's, it's not just that I... It's not like it's the greatest ever and I don't think of it because of all these other glosses. I don't think of it because I, I have other glosses that I like better. For example, the, the coral gloss from Persona Cosmetics does the exact same thing in every way, but it's one of my favorite gloss formulas of all time. And this one, even though it's good, it, it's not. It's just this kind of like weird limited edition thing that they sent to me in PR, I think because they like needed to get rid of products. Like I think that it wasn't selling out. And so they just like started sending some of these limited edition products out to influencers to move them. By the time I started using it, I think like you couldn't even buy it anymore. And so it's just sort of sitting here being beautiful and weird and wasting away. And I think it's, it's time has come. Everything else is, I mean, it's not as though it's all on the newer side. Like, let's see, what are the actual oldest ones? This one, my friend Daisy sent to me, I think in 20, it, it was probably 2019 or 20. These I both got at BeautyCon probably again, like in 2019. No, Daisy wouldn't have sent this to me in 2020. I, I have no sense of time anymore. The pandemic really destroyed my sense of time. I think these are 2019. Those are all from 2019. These Kaja glosses are brand new and I love them. This Tower 28 gloss and this one I purchased for myself this year and I love them. Oat is looking incredibly orange though. Doesn't, like, I don't remember Oat being orange. Does this look to you like maybe the color's gone off and weird stuff is happening in the tube? Like, the yellow is separated, yellow pigment is like separated out. Does it look weird to you? I know that something weird has happened with this one. I think that whatever, whether it's micas or glitters, whatever the metallic particles are have like dyed the paddle green. And I just do not remember Oat looking this orange. Girl, look how orange you Evan look. Anyway, they're they're newish. They're pretty new. I mean, I got them for myself this year. I'm gonna keep them. This is new NPR, gonna keep it. New NPR, gonna keep it. New NPR. I never reckoned with this, but I'm gonna hang on to it for the time being and keep using it and because I haven't really given it like a thorough review. Favorite, favorite, love it, favorite. Love it, favorite. Like it a lot. Actually, this disappointed me a little bit and has recently kind of grown on me. And this is a nice nourishing glass as well. So all these are in great shape, still in rotation. And yeah, they're they're all they're all staying. And then these three are from 2019. Do they have expiration info on them? Yeah, fussy says 12 months. And these glasses say 18 months. So according to the brands. These three glosses are past their past their prime. And here's the thing. They are feeling pretty old and I've used them a lot, especially this one. I've used all three of these a lot though. And so the packaging feels grody, the doe foot feels a little bit grody. And you know, this is like a wet product that you're putting on your lip and then dipping back in. I think I think I'm just gonna let them go. I, I mean, they've been great. They're not totally panned, totally used up. But as you saw, I have a ton of beautiful glosses. I have 14 beautiful newish glosses that are in great shape. I would actually rather just focus on using them up before they go bad, instead of like obsessively using these even though they pretty much have, you know, according to the brand. And even if they haven't technically gone off, like 
even though in these three cases it may not be that they're teeming with bacteria and they're going to make me sick. They're just getting older with every day that passes. And since I have so many beautiful other ones and I've actually gotten really good use out of these three, I think it's okay for me to let, let them go. This is one of my all-time favorite glosses and definitely my favorite drugstore gloss, the super lustrous, the gloss in the shade Blissed Out. It just looks so pretty on the lips and it feels wonderful. I will probably buy this again someday. I mean, not again, I, I didn't buy it actually. It was given to me for free for a review. I'll probably replace it someday by buying it for myself, but I'm not gonna do that right now because I have these 14 other beautiful glosses. I'm gonna work on them for a while. And then someday maybe when my gloss collection is dwindling, um, I'll buy this again. But I think that it's okay for me to let these guys go just in the interest of making sure that nothing that's too, too old gets kind of like stuck in my collection and then just stays way longer than it should. Okay, that is it. Wow, this is such a rainbow of gloss. There we go, a true lip gloss rainbow to end the video. This one's technically still in purgatory. I'm still testing it out, um, but this is great. I feel like this is like an approachable gloss collection for me. I can make progress on all of these and I'm really enjoying lip gloss lately. It's what I mostly wear. So I'm hoping to make some progress on these, just like with the lipstick video, going through these glosses and checking the expiration dates on these ones that, you know, I know I've had them for a while, like a couple of years, but I wasn't sitting here feeling like they were aged, you know, but then you really think about it, think back and you check and you realize that they kind of are aged. Um, it really makes me want to focus on using these products up. It's really, really reminding me that these are perishable goods. They don't last forever. The lip product portion of my vicious collection-wide makeup declutter, fall 2022. I guess it's winter now. December 2022, holiday 2022, a holiday declutter. The project is to declutter my makeup collection down to something pretty tiny with which to start the year. I spend a lot of my makeup wearing time these days testing makeup. So it doesn't really make sense for me to have a very large collection of pieces of makeup that are my special pieces sitting around. They languish much more than they would otherwise languish if I didn't test makeup as part of my job. I have to give you the disclaimer, the vast majority of these products are products that I didn't pay money for. They are lip products that were either sent to me for review by brands or that the business of my YouTube channel purchased just for me to review, not necessarily for me to keep and not necessarily because I even wanted them. Most of these lip products are just meant for me to use to create content. And that's why it's time to clear the decks, clear out all of the things that have already served their purpose of helping me create content and just keep the things that I want to use. So this is what we're dealing with when they're all out of their boxes and containers. I'm feeling simultaneously really a bit overwhelmed. You know, I mean, it's, I haven't separated these out into glosses and lipsticks and different types of things. This is just every lip product. I'm a little bit overwhelmed and intimidated because as I was pulling them out, I was like, I love this one. I love this one. I just really love lip products. The feelings that I had when I was taking them out of their boxes and spreading them out, those pre-declutter feelings that are like, I don't know if I can do this. It's going to be hard for me to get rid of a lot of things because I really love them. I was having those feelings and it made me want to kind of give myself a moment where I'm like, Hannah, it's okay to keep a nice group of lipsticks. You know what I mean? I don't need to edit it down to just like three. I'm not going for hyper minimalism here. At the same time, this is just so much to get through. You know what I mean? It's going to be probably a, a bit of a mega video in the way that the blush declutter was. And I think that I am just going to go through piece by piece, not separating them out into groups because it's 
not a situation where I'm trying to keep like a balanced number of glosses and lip treatments or something. No, I'm just keeping the ones that I love the absolute most irrespective of the relationship between that product and the rest of what I'm keeping or not keeping. Okay, here we go. I need to just start. So the Glossier Balm.com in birthday cake, is that right? The birthday Balm.com. I actually have come to kind of like the Balm.com. I besmirched it before because it's basically just petroleum jelly, but sometimes I just need to put something occlusive on my lips. And I've found it pretty useful to have a bunch of balm.coms lying around because I feel like I can always grab something, like there's always something to put on my lips to lock in the moisture. And I kind of like this one because it has a little bit of sparkle in it and it tastes and smells like vanilla. So my first instinct is to keep it, but we'll see. I'm going to do a reckoning at the end. And this is the kind of thing that I could see maybe not making it through if I end up with a whole bunch of this kind of thing. The mangobalm.com is probably my favorite. If I were just going to keep one, narrow it down to one or two, then this one would be in. So I'm definitely gonna set aside this as a probable keep. This is an Ellis Foss Lippy. I have a couple of them. Oh, just looking at it reminds me how much I love the Ellis Foss brand, the colors, the formulas. I never wear this though. Like it doesn't immediately say to me, I am your precious, I am your favorite. What it says to me is once most of these lippies are cleared out and you only have a few, maybe I will get some more play. I kind of want to give it that chance, at least here at the beginning of the de declutter, I feel like I want to give it that chance. So I'm going to set it aside as a possible keep. Oh my gosh, y'all, this is hard. <laughs> when I laid into the blushes at the beginning, it was like declutter, declutter, declutter. And here I am laying into the lippies and I'm like, keep, keep, keep. So this is uh, a Kosas lipstick. This is from a full brand review that I did of Kosas. It's a shade Vegas. I just really like the formula. I never wear it because I have too much lipstick, but I would like to wear it more. I think I need to just do a first pass that's like instinct. Like, do I love it or am I over it? Kind of. And and not beat myself up and just keep everything that I feel like I want to keep and then do a second pass where I'm a little bit more ruthless. So this is going to stay and keep for the first pass. This isn't a lippy. It's in the wrong place. This is also in the wrong place. This is a ColourPop gloss. ColourPop sends me a little bit of PR every once in a while. I've sort of drifted from the brand as a consumer, but the funny thing is sometimes there's something really great in the things that they send me. And this is one of those things. It's a gloss. It's the So Glassy Gloss. It's probably not even available anymore. You know, ColourPop, it's like the fast fashion of makeup. So they're always making things and discontinuing them immediately. And I don't even know if with my lighting, you'll really be able to see. It's just really sparkly. You can kind of see it more in the tube. And the formula is good. ColourPop does a good lippy. You know what I mean? They do a good gloss and I just like it. I will sometimes take this with me when I'm traveling. I just like being able to slather on a thick, goopy, really shiny, glitter packed gloss. When I look at it, I'm like, oh yeah, that old thing. But I also just don't feel like decluttering, at least not this first round. All right, doing very badly so far. Okay, this is something that can go. This, the rare being among these lippies, it's something that I bought myself on kind of an ill-fated trip to Ulta several months ago. I just, Drunk Elephant, I don't know. It's still, it's a brand that still has sort of a mythic allure for me. And at the time my lips were really dry and I didn't really have anything truly nourishing. So I got it. It's the, what's it called? Maybe it's just called the lippy balm. I got it and I just hate it. It's so hard. It's hard and I, it's totally unsatisfying to apply to the lips. It feels like rubbing a stick of wax onto your lips and you can see it has these divots in it. That's for me like digging it out with my finger and emulsifying it and putting it on my lips. So that's what I've had to do to, you know, get it to emulsify and apply a thick enough layer to my lips, you know, that it's satisfying to me and feels like it might do something, but then I don't even feel like it's really moisturizing my lips. I just regret buying it and I don't want to keep it. This, however, product that I recently reviewed in my Violet Gray video, the Amicole Lip Oil. It's like a thick, quite glossy, nourishing lip treatment oil gloss hybrid thing. And I absolutely love it. Definitely keeping that. This is also in the wrong place. Oh my gosh, why? I have a, oh, I guess I decluttered one thing. Why am I doing so badly? Have I just not gotten to the, the, the juicy ones or am I just not in the declutter mindset today? I don't know, but I'm going to have to get it together. I have a feeling that the second round is going to be vicious. 
Yes. This is Victoria Beckham Girl. This is also from a brand review that I did of Victoria Beckham. And I don't know, I, I have a, I would say I have a handful of products this color, basically, lip products this color. And maybe what'll happen at the end is that they'll sort of all go head to head and I'll just pick the nicest one. But this might end up being the nicest one because the packaging is so beautiful. The formula is also pretty good. I do like owning this. I don't feel like it is an easy candidate for declutter. Wow, I'm just the worst. Okay, here's something that I can declutter. This is a Bobbi Brown gloss. It is the crushed oil infused lip gloss. And let me tell you, it's a great product. It is a great moisturizing, juicy gloss with a beautiful pigment level, very pretty color. This is in the color Free Spirit. It was PR kind of a long time ago at this point, and that's why I'm going to get rid of it because it's just old. It's a couple of years old. And I think that if I had a much smaller makeup collection or if I wasn't, you know, constantly reviewing makeup, I might be pushing it a little bit more in terms of how long I would keep a product when it gets to that point where I'm like, oh, that's probably pretty old, but it's probably still kind of okay. But in my life with all of these lipsticks, what happens when something gets like two and a half years old is that it's not necessarily maybe too old to ever use again, but it's gotten old enough that I just feel like it's unrealistic to think that I will really use it very many times ever again. You know, it's like close enough to the end of its life with me that it's okay to declutter it, especially when I'm trying to shrink what I own. So this can go, and I think there are going to be a lot of other things that go for that same reason. The Glossier Vanillic Lip in Disco. This is actually pretty much brand new. I had an unopened one and I opened it recently. The same is true of Pony here. They're both pretty much brand new. This is a discontinued product that I really love from Glossier. Again, haven't been wearing them much, would like to wear them more because I love this formula so much, but because it's such old news and because they are discontinued, they might not make it through the second round. The Summer Fridays Lip Balm in Vanilla Beige. I've been wearing this a lot. This has actually been a great kind of nourishing product for me. This is actually another thing that I bought myself, another one of those rare products. It tends to be nourishing, sort of simple nourishing lip products that I buy myself. I sometimes get to a point where I'm casting around and I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't have a lip balm. I don't have any of those hybrid nourishing products. I need to buy one. I feel like I've used more than half of this, it's harder for me to get rid of because I bought it myself. I don't love it as much as I love some of the ones I've acquired recently, like the Ami Cole, the ones from Make Beauty. But because I bought it myself, it's funny, it feels more wasteful to get rid of it. But if I'm honest with myself, I think that at this point I will always default to the Make Beauty Serum Balm or the Ami Cole instead of this. So I think I'm going to put it in the declutter box and then kind of see how I feel at the end about how many nourishing sort of hybrid products products I've ended up keeping. The Persona Lip Gloss in Twilight. I love this gloss. I absolutely love the Persona Gloss, but this, I just, again, both of these Persona Glosses, I just, they're kind of old. I've just, I've had them for years at this point. They were PR years ago when I lived in the, my downtown apartment in LA. And at this point for me, that's just feeling kind of old. I'm aware that I've been putting these on my lips since before the pandemic, basically. It's time for them to go. Okay, this is a really tough one. I am trying to keep my feet to the flame about not keeping things for sentimental reasons these days, and this really tests that resolve. Oh, but you know what? It does feel like the formula is, is changing. It's getting kind of gummy. So that makes it a little bit easier. This is a Finding Ferdinand lipstick that my beautiful, wonderful, extraordinary friend, Ted, Buffalo Beauty Boy, created for me with Finding Ferdinand after I had watched Ted's Finding Ferdinand video, been inspired, made my own lipsticks with Finding Ferdinand, made a video about that. Then Ted and Finding Ferdinand got together and made me this color which at the time felt really, really pink to me. Like it was really different for me and it was like Ted pushing me outside of my comfort zone. And since then, it's become something that is a little bit more comfortable for me to wear. The color was just perfect. I mean, it was, it's, it was perfectly something that I didn't wear much at the time, but that does suit me, you know? So it was just, it was a real serve. But more than that, it has just brought me so much joy to own this, to have it with my lipsticks, to see the bullet and to feel those feelings of 
just connection and community that it represents. But I know that decluttering it does not mean that my connection with my friend will be diminished, my love for this community will be diminished, or any of the memories around this will be diminished. If anything, it kind of intensifies that to have this moment with it and to, you know, thank it and thank Ted for its specialness in my life and let it go. Okay, here's a really old balm.com. Uh, I've had this for years and it's, you know, actually I've used quite a lot of it and the, and it's all yucky. So, you know, I have others. This is definitely not going to be one of the ones I want to keep. Kierweiss Confidence. I just love these Kierweiss lipsticks. I love the way the pigment interacts with the formula. I love the colors. This is a tough one to let go. And same with the other one, Euphoria. Although, you know what? Euphoria is a little bit more of like a normal color for me. This is kind of like a rusty red, whereas Confidence... This is the one I always think of when I think of these lipsticks. It's this really bright, almost fluorescent. I'm gonna keep this one, but I think I can let go of the other one. This is uh, an hourglass gloss that I got for a review a while back. It's called Cosmo. It's a little bit plumping and it's sort of got that NARS orgasm color. You know what I mean? Like a pink with a gold shift. I really like it. I like wearing it. I like how it looks and feels. It's an elegant formula, kind of thin feeling, like wet feeling, but it has tenacity. But it has a minty taste and smell that I don't like. And I'm going to let that be the reason that I declutter it. It because I like a lot of things about it and it's hard to let it go. However, I know that I wear it less frequently than I otherwise would because of that taste and smell. This is in the wrong place. Gucci Goldie Red is definitely staying, you know, one of the best. The Isom Lip Liners. So it's actually called the Dual Lip pencil, this product from Isom. This is the entire collection. They're double-ended lip pencils. I love them. I love the formula. I love the spectrum of colors. I love knowing that I'm always going to be able to find a lip liner that goes with whatever lipstick I'm wearing. I think what I'm going to do is to keep these and let that be a reason to let go of a bunch of my other lip liners. We'll see. This is one of my favorite lipsticks of all time that's getting kind of old. I actually don't know what I'm going to do about this. It's the YSL Slim Glow Matte Lipstick. Okay, opening it and rolling it up is making me realize that I think of it as one of my favorite lipsticks of all time and I wore it a lot for the first like year after I got it. I love it. I love the shape. I love the color. I love the sort of thin waxy formula and I'm just not wearing it. I think I can let it go. All right, we're really, we're kind of getting into it now. I'm starting to feel that gratifying feeling when I'm honest with myself about how much I'm really using something and I kind of separate the fantasy of owning it from the reality of owning it and make the right decision to declutter it. Kind of getting there, getting into it. Let's go, let's go is how I feel. So here are some lip liners from BK Beauty that are beautiful. They make a great lip liner, really pretty colors, and I like them, but these I can let go because I kept those ones from Isom. I'm just more familiar with the Isom ones. I think of them more often. I know the colors. I'm like, they're in rotation. You know what I mean? I mean, I don't need to keep similar products in similar colors. This is something I actually really like and that's pretty new. I got this uh, when I reviewed Kosas just this past year. It's the Hyaluronic Lip Balm in the shade Flow. They're very pigmented, these balms, and they're also very, very nourishing. This is something that I'm looking forward to wearing more frequently once the collection's kind of thinned out. Another bomb.com. This is the lavender one, which I I'm kind of fond of. Just I just am keeping it for now. Okay, here we're getting into the juicy stuff, right? This is raw chocolate. It is a Maybelline matte and iconic lipstick in my collection. Those of you who've been around for a while will know. I have loved it and worn it for so long. I bought it for myself years ago. This is another, it's like a pre-pandemic lipstick. And it's weird that it's time to get rid of it, but it is. It's just, it's a drugstore lipstick that's like three years old, you know? And I feel like it served me really well. It's really held down the fort. But I have other lipsticks. I even have other lipsticks at this point in beautiful 
beautiful brown colors. Back in the day when I first got this, it was like I couldn't find a beautiful brown lipstick to save my life. And I think that they're just, they're much more available now. And so for all practical reasons, I feel okay about decluttering this. This is a beautiful product from Erin's Faces. It's a lip balm in the shade Flush, and it's just like a really lightly pigmented, nourishing, tinted lip balm. I have gotten a lot of use out of this, and it was fe it's been featured in like my top 10 lippies several times. However, I haven't been wearing it as much going into this winter because I have so many other kind of gloss balm hybrid, serum balm type things going right now that I'm testing. I'm really glad that I got to know this product. I love this brand, Erin's Faces, but I don't think I need to keep this one right now. This is an example of what I was talking about. This is the Make Beauty Serum Balm in Nude Nova. And I actually bought this myself recently. I had one of these that I used up completely. I missed it. And I just, it's just the best. It's like the best lip treatment. The kind of lip treatment that I will slather on at night or on days when I'm not wearing makeup. It's not really makeup. You know what I mean? It's just like the best skincare for the lips. I'm so glad that I got it. I'm actually wearing it today. This is maybe like my top lippy right now, you know, so it's going nowhere. Here's an M Cosmetics lip liner, an oldie but a goodie. It's in the shade Kitten. It's also one that can go because I'm keeping all of those ones from Esam. I think I can also let go of the, these ones from Patrick Ta, which I only have because Joe got them for me to review. I recently applied one of these on camera in the Makeup I Forgot to Review video. So if you're interested in a full demonstration of these products from me, then you know, click through and watch that video. It's a fantastic product, but these aren't really good colors for me. And if I ever want a color like this, I have it, again, in the Esam lip liner. So these can go. However, two lip liners that I am keeping as the exceptions to the rule, the Khaki lip liner from Thrive. Khaki sent this to me. I love the color. It's not just sentimental, right? I appreciate that my friend designed it, but it also is a great color, works really well, great formula. And I do find myself using it, even though I have the ones from Esam. It's like, I remember it. It exists in my makeup mind palace, and that's what means it's staying. And this I actually wore when I got married, and it's still going strong. Strong. It's a Lancome lip liner in natural mauve, and it's just a really sticky, sturdy formula, which I appreciate, and I actually wear this a lot too. All right, I have some more hard decisions to make. Givenchy Mandarin Bolero, probably one of my favorite lipsticks of all time. Both the color, Mandarin Bolero, which is like this fluorescent watermelon, but somehow really wearable, and also this limited edition packaging. This was PR years ago. I know that it's past its prime and I'm not wearing it. This is the exact kind of lipstick that this declutter is designed to exhume from my collection. So I'm gonna let it go, but you know, with a moment of appreciation for how lovely it is. The Merit Serum Balm Intense, which I reviewed recently. This is in the shade Milky Way. This is a great product and it's pretty much brand new. So I'm gonna keep it. I have these Kaja glosses. I quite like them actually. This is PR as well. Kaja sends me a little bit of PR every once in a while. Milk Tea and Pink Drink. They're a little sticky for me though. I feel like if I'm gonna wear a gloss right now, I'm gonna wear one that has that kind of watery, slidey, really hydrating feel. These are such classic glosses and they're really good. I wear them a little bit, but I think maybe not enough to merit keeping them in this declutter. And it's that thing of like, they're good, but they're not my precious. I think I need to remember, I'm just keeping my precious. The Gucci lippies though, they are my precious. This is Janet Rust and Lorna Dune. And I'm definitely keeping them. A little bit sentimental as well because Janet Rust was a gift and Lorna Dune I also wore when I got married, but it's not the only reason I'm keeping them. I don't know where a royal scandal is. I don't think it's here. This is another piece of ColourPop PR. It's the Lux Lip Oil in Gleam On. As you can see, I've had it for quite a while. You can tell because, you know, the writing is wearing away. This is a great product from ColourPop, the Lux Lip Oil. It's just, it's really nourishing, hydrating, thin, beautiful, it's great. However, I am not gonna keep this because I grab it when I can't find something else that serves this purpose. Like when I can't find one of my Make Beauty ones or the Merit Lip Oil or anything, then I'll just, reach for this because I can't find those. My hope is that by clearing things like this out of my collection, I will more frequently be able to find those, you know? 
I might hang on to this one, though. This is the same formula, same product, but obviously different because it's bright red. And I don't really have anything quite like this, this sort of jelly-like clear red. And it's also brand new. This is PR that ColourPop just sent to me. I'm kind of still testing it. It has a little way to go. I'm going to keep this for now. All right, here we have more drugstore lipsticks that kind of occupy the same niche as Maybelline Raw Chocolate. However, Mink, Revlon Mink and Rum Raisin are not quite as old as Raw Chocolate was. Gone Grage is. It's old, but I think it's hard to get. You know what's interesting? This Maybelline Gone Grage, one of my favorite lipsticks of all time. I just live for this. It is, again, pre-pandemic, several years old. I haven't been wearing it lately, probably partly because I'm testing other things, but also because it's so old. I don't want to declutter this for age unless I'm sure that I can replace it. Like, I really, really, really love this lipstick, the color, everything. I think I'm going to set it aside. I think it might be discontinued. I'm going to look into buying a replacement for it, a fresh one. And if I can't replace it, I might keep it just for swatch purposes, just to see how similar to it other products are, because this is a very unique balance of tones to me. It really has like a, a place in the landscape of my thinking about color for lip products. And I wouldn't want to give up the reference point. I don't usually keep things for that reason, but this one is so unique and so high in my esteem that I think I will keep it for that reason. Revlon Mink and Revlon Rum Raisin, this is Mink and this is Rum Raisin, are two of the absolute best colors of all time, drugstore lipstick formulas of all time. They're just so good. The thing is, I found out when I was reviewing and swatching the Merit lip formula, I found out that Merit Lavenue, which is this lipstick right here, is really similar to Revlon Rum Raisin. Like they have a lot in common. It wouldn't, it doesn't look like they would in the bullet because Lavenue looks darker, but they really are the same on the lips. And here we have Revlon Mink next to Merit 1990, which I actually prefer a little bit because it's just a little bit more cool toned. And this is maybe my most worn Merit lipstick. I love these Merit lipsticks so much. I really love the formula. Swatching the Revlon lipsticks again here is reminding me how good the formula is of them as well. I mean, these are just four really great pieces of makeup. But the way things are going for me right now, I'm reaching for these Merit lipsticks a lot. I just feel connected with them and in tune with the colors and the way they work with different looks. These two are not too old to use, but I think they're getting closer to the end of their life. And I think it makes more sense for me to keep the complement of Merit lipsticks that I have and not keep the dupes. After I made that swatch video about Merit lipstick, I didn't keep all of them. I just kept Tiger, 1990, Cabo, Baby, and Lavenue. And the other ones I gave away to my cousin. Oh. Here's a royal scandal. This is Gucci, a royal scandal. It's my all-time favorite lipstick. It was just sitting there, but it was sitting up on its end, so I didn't see it. Let's talk about these dragon lipsticks from ZC. This is tough. I really, I mean, you all know, if you saw me open these when they first sent them to me, I mean, I'm a sucker for ornate stuff, different stuff. I just got all excited about this ZC makeup when it came onto my radar, and it's undeniably awesome, right? Like, the packaging is undeniably awesome awesome. And the formula is really good too. And then they came out with these more neutral colors, which was exciting. When they first launched these dragon lipsticks, they only had reds and they came out with these more neutral colors. Here's the thing. The packaging, it's like because it occupies this place of novelty in my life and in my history making content. I just don't think of them as lipsticks that I wear. So they sit in my drawer. I think of them fondly, but they've never really gotten into rotation. And I thought that these browns would get into rotation. This one, I clearly did use some, and I also dropped it on the ground and it got smashed, which is why it's looking like that. But it's basically the same color as a Royal Scandal by Gucci, which I wear all the time. 
one. And somehow the Gucci lipstick, even though it's also ornate and fancy, somehow it it's like approachable to me. You know what I mean? It feels accessible to me. And these, they just never really made it all the way into the inner circle of my lipsticks that I wear. Opening them now though, this is such a great color. It's hard to not want to keep that. But again, I have my perfect brown already. This one might even be lighter and milkier than a Royal Scandal, which is really great. The formula is great. This one doesn't tempt me. It's too pink for me. That one's definitely too orange for me. That is a really pretty kind of soft red. That kind of makes me want to wear it. Okay, here's the thing. This milky brown right here is the one I want to keep because that's like my dream lipstick color. But it's so busted from having been dropped on the ground. I mean, like, that's how busted it is. I'm gonna let that be the reason that I don't keep it, even though the color is so pretty. I'm not gonna keep the one that's the same as a Royal Scandal or either of these. I'm gonna hang on to this right now. Maybe at the end, if I compare it to other things and I find I have something that's quite similar in color, I'll let it go too, because I'm really not wearing them. I like the idea of keeping one of these dragon lipsticks and actually interacting with it more. We'll see. This is an incredible piece of K-Beauty makeup from the brand 3CE. It is in the shade Explicit. It's just like a really, really, really rich velvety red, but it's old and I don't really wear it that much. It can go. This is the lipstick from La Bouche Rouge that I recently reviewed in my Violet Gray makeup video. I'm gonna keep this and I am also gonna hang on to its cardboard case. Okay, we're getting down to it, friends. This is the last of the pile, at least for the first round. This is the Merit Lip Oil in Taupe. I wear this product a lot, and I wear Marrakesh a lot as well. They are two of my most worn lip products. Marrakesh isn't here. I'm sure it's just, I think it's in my office because I've been wearing it a lot. I'm keeping them both. Glossier Leo, the only color of Generation G that I ever really loved. I coveted this back when it was hard to find, like a nice, warm, but true brown. And I just don't covet it anymore. I have plenty of things that serve the purpose that this used to serve in formulas that I like better. The cookiebutterbalm.com though, I don't know. I'm gonna put it in the keep pile for now. We're gonna have to have a balm.com reckoning at the end. The Rose Ink Lipstick. This, I got this in the second round of review products for Rose Ink. I really love it. Rose Ink makes such good products. The formulas are so good. This lipstick is no exception, but this is a classic product that I just, I got it just for review. It's beautiful. I got the information about it when I got it for review and I was able to apply it on camera and relay that information to you all, but I would never have bought it for myself because it's just, it's just a really good lipstick in a really basic color. I have no like active reason to let it go, but I also have no active reason to keep it. So that's going to be the reason that I don't keep it. This is one of my favorite pieces of makeup of all time. <laughs> you already know the Rouge Powder Lip Palette. It's going to stay. Ilia Memoir. This is a great product from Ilia, but it too is really similar to the Merit Lavenue lipstick. It's the Ilia Balmy Tint. I would love to have the Balmy Tint in a different color. It's, it's also just like a little bit dark for me to wear it in that sort of slather it on way that I would like to wear this formula because it's so nourishing and lovely. I just, I know for a fact that it's a dupe for Lavenue and I'm gonna keep Lavenue and not Memoir. I love this Ellis Foss gloss. It's really, really unusual. The color, I love wearing it. It kind of reminds me of the M Cosmetics Infinite Lip Cloud and Faded Clementine. I mean, the color kind of reminds me of that. I'm definitely gonna keep this. It's pretty unique in my collection. This is another Ellis Foss lip product. I think I can let this one go because the color is just a little bit more basic. You know what I mean? I have other things this color. This product from Kaja, this was PR recently. I love the color, but it has a really strong fruity smell and I just, I'm not really wearing it because of that. The Pat McGrath Gloss. This is a little gift with purchase when I got a Pat McGrath palette to review back in August. I like the formula quite a lot and I wore it again recently in a video where I was reviewing makeup that I hadn't yet reviewed. It is a very good, professional, effective, just straight up lip gloss, like makeup artist lip gloss. And I am just much more likely to use something with those nourishing qualities like the one from Merit when I need a product in this capacity. So I am not going to keep this. 
Another old favorite from ZC. This is one of their Picasso lipsticks. It has the Demoiselles d'Avignon painting on it. I mean, it's just so great. It's hard to declutter this because it feels like a collector's piece. You know what I mean? And the lipstick isn't bad either. I like the color. But the thing is, that feeling, that sort of collector's piece feeling, that's why I've kept this through a bunch of past declutters. Like, I have kept this and kept this and kept this because it's so special and beautiful. And I've worn it a little bit. And I've just gotten to the point where I'm like, I just don't want it taking up space anymore. Let's let this beautiful imagery that I'm capturing now with my camera, let's let that be the thing that I'm collecting. You know, like that's the memory. That's what it has done for me. I don't need to hold on to this physical item anymore to appreciate how special it is. The Isamaya Gloss Black Veil. Wear it all the time. Love it so much. Definitely keeping. This is a great gloss also from Erin's Faces, but it's also something I've had for quite a while and just haven't been using as much lately. So I'm gonna let that one go. I really liked this House Labs lipstick when I reviewed it. I was so impressed by it and I kept this because I was like, wow, it's a really great formula and it's a really beautiful red. But when I wanna wear a red, you know what I'm wearing? Velvet Dragon, Lisa Eldridge Velvet Dragon, my favorite red of all time. This is like the red to end all reds in my life and I don't need to keep this. This I just got to review, you know what I mean? It served its purpose when I made that content. I'm also gonna, am I gonna keep Velvet Fawn? I actually, I think I'm not gonna keep it. It's always, so the bullet is broken. It's really soft and it's broken at the bottom. It's always just a bit stronger of a color on me than I expect it to be. It doesn't really look like that in the swatch right now, but when I wear it, it feels like a rich, rosy color. There's like a dissonance between what I think of it as and what it actually looks like on me. And because of that, I don't think to wear it as often as I do some of my other lipsticks. So I think I'm okay with not keeping this. This is a Kaja lip treatment product. It has a scrub on the bottom and it has a really thick nourishing lip balm on top. As you can see, I've used some of it. I think it's really well formulated. It smells like pineapple. It's like pina colada smell. But again, because of that really sweet, strong scent and flavor, I tend to shy away from it just practically, even though I think it works really well to nourish the lips. I'm not gonna keep it. This is from Gen C. This is a new-ish brand and they sent me some products for review. It's a good lipstick, but it's really not in my color. I haven't filmed with this yet though. Maybe I should put the Gen C products aside. I have a handful of them. I actually have enough kind of maybe to do a whole video or at least to incorporate them in a trying new makeup video. Yeah, these are in the wrong place. They should be in the box of makeup that I'm still testing for review. The Versed Lip Oil, a fantastic product. In fact, you can't see because it's filled back up with air, but it's mostly empty. I've actually used this almost completely up, so it can go in this declutter. And the City Lips Lip Plumper, I really love. I often put this on when I'm doing skincare, preparing to apply makeup, just to give my lips a little boost. I'm gonna hang on to this for now. Okay, here's the situation. These are the things that I have decluttered. And these are all the lipsticks and lippies and lip glosses and lip products of every kind that made it through the first round. I don't wanna keep them all, this is too much. We have to go again and we have to go hard. Okay, here are the keeps, the current keeps. I think what I need to do is to go through and ask myself, is it my precious of each of these products? And in doing so, narrow it down. I'm gonna separate these out. I'm gonna um, organize them again a little bit. At this point, I think it will help me to kind of see when I have things that are similar to each other. All right, I'm definitely keeping the Rouge Powder Lip Palette. It's definitely my precious.
Here we have the products that are genuinely lip glosses, right? I would just call these absolutely for sure glosses. I think that I can let go of this ColourPop gloss, even though I'm kind of fond of it. I'd rather wear the Ami Cole or the Isamaya gloss or even the Ellis Foss. Given that this one from City Beauty is a treatment product, I feel like this is a pretty reasonable, rational group of glosses to be keeping. Okay, and these are the ones that I have that are really just lip balm, right? They're not really about adding color. It's really about treating the lips. I'm actually not going to keep the birthday cake balm.com. It's so sweet. I love the color of the cookie butter one. I love the way that it looks, but it's also quite sweet. I think I'm just going to keep the mango and the lavender. I prefer this sort of herbal grounded flavoring for a treatment product like this. And of course, I'm keeping the Make Serum. Okay, and these are products that are all what I would call like treatment, glossy, comfortable, but with pigment. And of these, it's curious. I actually think even though I respect the formula so much, I think that it's the Kosas Sport Balm that's going to go. Because for me personally, it's too pigmented for its format. If something's going to be in this chapsticky format, I don't want it to be as pigmented as this is. I would love to have this in an unpigmented or less pigmented color. And I'm good with keeping the other four. It's this group, which is like lipstick, lipstick, sticky, sticky lipstick that I feel like I can afford to cull a bit. The Gucci lipsticks are all my precious. The Victoria Beckham is not really my precious color wise. Okay, this right here is the La Bouche Rouge Nude Brown Lipstick. That's Victoria Beckham Girl. This is Kosas Vegas, and that's Merit Baby. Kosas Vegas is gonna go. It's the most orange, the most peachy orange of them. This right here is this ZC lipstick that I thought I might keep, M05. Right in the middle is Gucci Goldie Red, the lip wall, and that's Merit Cabo. I think I am going to keep this ZC lipstick kind of on trial. I'm going to keep it on trial, see if I wear it, see if I like wearing it. If another month goes by and I don't wear it, I'll let it go. I really want to cull a couple more from here. I really have my sights set on an extremely edited lipstick collection that allows my favorites to shine. I'm going to take out Victoria Beckham Girl. I just feel like it's peachier even than this one, the nude brown from La Bouche Rouge that I recently reviewed and found to be a bit too peachy. So if this one was too peachy, then what am I doing keeping this one? I think I can take out Keir Weiss Confidence as well. As much as I love that sort of semi-fluorescent red color, realistically, what I'm going to wear when I want a bright red, it's going to be Merit Cabo, it's going to be Janet Rust, it's going to be Velvet Dragon from Lisa Eldridge. This is a good example of something that I loved making content with, that I loved wearing for a video that I don't need to keep. Okay, this is very edited. We have the Gucci, we have the Lisa Eldridge, and I also have Kitten Mischief somewhere. I know I have a couple Lisa Eldridge lipsticks coming for review, so this won't be the only one in the collection, but I might declutter Kitten Mischief. For now, it's just Velvet Dragon. We have La Bouche Rouge, we have ZC, and we have Merit. This is kind of more what I was imagining. I feel at peace with that. Oh, I forgot about this. I forgot about this brown Ellis Foss lipstick. You know what? Swatching it out like that, it's got a little bit more of an orange undertone rather than that kind of milky neutral. Well, uh, hang on to it. This is also, I'm keeping this on trial as well. I'm going to try to wear this in the coming days. And if I don't love how it looks on me, I'll declutter it too. And then I think all of the liners, the Isom liners and the other two liners that I kept, all of them can stay.
So this is the lippy edit right now. This feels pretty good to me. It still feels like a lot objectively, but you know, I love a lip product. This feels like enough to really play with and right on the edge of being too much given that I know I'll be reviewing new lipsticks in the new year. So I'm gonna have to keep an eye on this part of my collection. I didn't want to force myself. You know what I mean? I didn't want to edit it down to only one red because I just love, I love all the reds, you know? So I think I found a good balance. And I'm definitely letting go of way more than I'm keeping. Well, actually not way more. Uh, a quick and probably imprecise count of the declutter box turned up about 45 products that I'm decluttering. And what remains here is, I think it's over 30. 32 products. So, you know, it's more that I'm decluttering than keeping, but it's not nearly as dramatic as the blush declutter where it was like, a f I just kept a fraction of my cheek products. And even though there are some beautiful products in the declutter box and even going through to count, I was like, wow, I can't believe that I'm letting go of all of these. This is just about as much as I can manage in my makeup mind palace. I'm feeling a lot better now that I've made all these decisions. Wow, putting them into their little container like this makes me feel a lot better about the degree to which I edited my collection. Everything fits into here. You know, there's the there's the Merit lip oil that I couldn't find kicking around. There's the Lisa Eldridge lipsticks that I couldn't find. So it's a little bit more than this in reality. These ones don't fit into the little squares. They're too chubby. But it's really nice that I'll be able to just put this on my vanity and basically see all of my lippies in one place. This is the smallest that my lippy collection has been in a long time. So that is it. Thank you so much for spending this time with me. I hope that you enjoyed it or were able to drift off to sleep to it or whatever it was that you wanted from it. Please remember to subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. And don't forget to take extra good care of yourself so that you can be the most effective version of yourself as you do your work in the world.